All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tayemba, and welcome to our uh, Sunday conference call for our Black Star Pan-African community. And today is September 20th, and we're having a private uh, conference call dealing with the updates for the one year uh, progress and process of what we just completed from September 2019 to September 2020. And I have our attorney Richard and also our consultant Kwabna and I'm gonna connect them in in a few minutes. I'm gonna get uh, right to the point. Uh, so what I wanna do is do a quick uh, five minute uh, overview of how we got here and, um, you know, and then we'll just take it from there. So everything goes back to um, uh, October, November of 2018 uh, when we were looking to um, uh, build our group and take our group to a setup to where we can just connect with other Pan-African groups uh, there in Ghana that has land and we connect and work together to build the kind of community that we have at this uh, very moment. Uh, so that uh, connection was a company called Garvey Town. Uh, so we was able to connect like-minded energy as far as uh, us wanting to build an independent community for us with the most important emphasis on us as a people connecting and integrating into the African society as far as uh, um, main country Ghana, and then just you know, put our energy together cooperative economically. Uh, unfortunately, you know, during the time of just connecting with them, uh, you know, all the things that we talked about doing uh, for years, because I've been having these meetings uh, since 2004 uh, with uh, groups that I joined, and eventually just we started this building our fresh group under the energy of Africa for Africans in uh, 2006. Uh, but uh, what uh, the problem that we have or had with uh, Garvey Town is what I'm gonna bring Richard in. It's an illegal situation to where we wanna make sure that we as the individual have complete legal ownership of the land that we're getting under our 99 year lease. And also to be able to be a part of a, a company itself uh, that's registered there in Ghana and be able to just begin to build our independence in Ghana with everything being done and established in Ghana. Uh, so, um, those things that uh, we couldn't uh, do with Garvey Town because they refused to register the land, they refused for us to really organize together to where us as the individuals have input in what we're developing. Uh, so that's why we have committees and things like that. And that's why we have uh, taken on the approach we have taken on. And the other thing also, we're getting to the part where everyone is gonna be starting asking about, uh, can I build this home there or I thought about, uh, I saw this nice design and uh, I, want, I want to have this kind of fence in my, in my, around my property and so on and so on. And it's going to get to the point where you have to leave it as a creative flow of energy where we can live our most incredible dreams in Africa and build the homes that we want. And if you want a garage, you want a two floor house, you want a terrace, a balcony, uh, those things were problems with them. They basically wanted to force us to live in uh, you know, bungalow uh, with no garage and they, and they say you can have as many, you know, you can have a few different rooms and things like that. And then the worst thing of all, they explain that uh, we can choose our own builders and then they don't try to force us to use their builders and tell us we can uh, build duplex and things like that as our own investment property and they don't want to, wanted to control that. So that's the problems we had. So our goal um, literally uh, once we got into the program, about several months into the program, after this dealing with those situations, the goal was just to just work as hard to get a refund as possible, and then just start a fresh process. And uh, so we worked out certain things to where we offered everybody a credit onto the next project. And uh, even though we didn't get all of the money we needed to get from Garvey Town, we got about 20% of our refund back. But Honestly, I made it work for everyone and made sure everybody got their money. Some people decided to move on, um, which I do understand. Um, those kind of those kind of madness where things are not clear, where we can't come together and just say, hey, let's do this and let's make it work for those of us as a people or, or accommodate us. If it's not going to be that situation, people are going to walk away. So the energy that what we're talking about right now with the uh, Black Star Pan-African community was based on this, us already having a group of people or uh, from over the period of time of doing all these uh, tours to Ghana and they're saying, hey, you know, the only thing that we're missing now is number one, a better lawyer and a better consultant. So the lawyer and the consultant uh, were fired because they just, they didn't really step their game up and they, they were paid to represent us to make sure that we didn't have any bad dealings and 
Um, then, you know, certain disclosure came out later on that the land wasn't registered and they were actually behind on the payments. Their cost of what they had to pay for the land was a whole lot less than what we just completed a, a little while ago. And, um, and they literally had a, had a better deal. They had 300 acres and the, only, the things that they had, to, they had to build were a school and a medical center and a few other things and provide a few scholarships and things like that for a reduced price, like almost like a 99% uh, discount. Uh, you know, so with, uh, we didn't want, we don't want any deal structured in our program. So we just went straight for this, the direct deal and paid for our land. So we're good, we don't have those troubles. And that's what I'm also bringing in our attorney to talk about, uh, because those are the things that cause us not to progress. And it is, it has sucked the life out of me. Sometimes I look at myself, I'm like, I'm aging. And I know, you know, we naturally grow older, but I was in my mid twenties when we were working on these things and years have gone by and you just, it was just hard to find the right groups of people. And then, you know, so everything that we're looking to do is to show you hundred percent transparency from receipts to uh, reports to everything that we're doing that way, everything is clear and we can trust each other because that has been a problem uh, as simple as that is. Um, so we wanted to create things as clean as possible. And that's why we have so much public and also private documentation of like every single conference call that we do. Uh, so nevertheless, uh, the closeout of that situation with Garvey Town is we just started just trying to do conference calls to work things out. And I stepped out of so, some of those conference calls so other members can kind of listen to what they were, they, you know, basically kind of bring their, their issues and bring the things that they wanted to them and ask for solutions. And so that was uh, literally June, uh, July of uh, last year. So uh, in August, I talked to my brother, uh, Kwabna, and I also uh, got a good referral for a good attorney, uh, Richard, which you're gonna hear from in a few uh, minutes. And uh, I talked to Richard and I told him our situation and uh, you know, he did the, the legwork and work to get access to different uh, chiefs uh, who had land. And then also Kwabna uh, sent him a few different uh, properties uh, based on our connections. So after, I, and then I had a few other people working on these projects also, because I was literally determined, because it literally just, it literally, it's one of those things that like break your heart and break you down and you just gotta get back up and say, you just not gonna let it wear you out because we had all our, we were literally just ready to start building and providing all the energy and, and setting up Garvey Town. So, but the best thing is that we move forward because if we can talk together, work together and figure things out and be respectful to each other and honest with each other, especially since all of us are, work very hard for our money and things like that. And then someone can give us a report of what they spend the money on and things like that. And that was also one of the final drawback is like, when we was trying to get our refund, we just said, hey, just let us know what money was spent for what, and then work, we just agree on, you know, a, a refund where I know we're gonna lose some money, but even that they couldn't draft up and say, hey, we can present you this amount of refund and we can pay in this amount of time. And we're sorry that whatever, whatever didn't work out. Uh, it was none of those things. So if you see Garvey Town is dead all over the internet, that's me and the, what I do famously. Uh, and you know, to where people don't, you know, to where people that are coming to deal with us in the future, understand that we're just not gonna let them just deal with us a certain way. So I've had Garvey Town back and forth in court twice. I'm wearing them out just on the court situation. And I got other tactics. Uh, so now they're trying to double up and um, putting a statement out that they're not dead. You know, but the thing of it is, you know, you have our money and we still have, taking care of what you're supposed to take care of. And at the same time to the biggest thing family is a few people decided to stay at Garvey Town with all the crazy stuff going and I commend them. But once they stayed, months went by, they couldn't hear from them. There's no updates, there's no details and things like that. Uh, so even in that situation, uh, you can really see what they were for themselves because I'm also letting people know that I didn't sabotage them because uh, <laughs> they're basically saying I sabotaged them and took over their ideas. They had 16 years to do this and they had all of our support to do this. And when they failed, we had to move forward. And then now since we move forward, I'm sabotaging them. So everyone had a fair option to move forward with them or just get refund and go their own way or move forward with what we're building. Uh, so this is why I'm looking to be honest and be respectful and share everything as possible up front. And you can call me 24 seven. Uh, as a matter of fact, my line is just literally for the people that do these kind of business with Africa Tours and Investment. So I could just be more focused with, with those of us that's building this uh, energy. Uh, so family, uh, I'm just proud to say that we have this progress. And uh, our brother Richard, let me uh, uh, connect you in and let you introduce yourself and let you just talk about what you've been able to help us with.
on a more organized legal uh, process. All right, so Richard, when, you, when you're ready, just uh, unmute yourself and talk. Right, Good evening. Ask. Can you all hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, my, my, my name is Richard, and I am the lawyer for this whole process, the acquisition of the land at Jazzy. So, um, somewhere last year, somewhere last year, uh, Bomani and um, Bomani con contacted me, and then together with um, consultants, Kwabana, we went to Jazzy to uh, look for a land for our intended project. Um, Fortunately, we settled on a very nice area, an area conducive for a residential apartment, that's a settlement, a community. And um, we also settled on the area, bearing in mind that um, some of you would like to have um, arable land, fertile land for your backyard gardens and stuff, you know. Um, not all um, lands are suitable for these kinds of um, backyard farming and um, Bomani insisted that, well, in as much as the land is essentially for uh, residential apartments, that's for your community, you would um, love to have a land which can support um a few crops i mean for gardening for flowers and stuff so um we contacted one nana haiti uh, who is the chief of jazzy and then um we started negotiations with him um initially we we started with him on the acquisition of a 15 acre land so we, 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 we had several discussions with him back and forth, and finally we agreed on the way to go. Um, as uh, the lawyer for Black Star Pan-African Community, my uh, primary objective is to make sure that I represent you with respect to um, the negotiations and the acquisition of the land, everything that has to do with the acquisition of the land and to make sure that you have a good deal and whatever objective the community or the group has set for itself will be realized. So um, I, I and the consultants, um, Kabna, we engaged the chief and at the end of the day, um, we were shown a land. But um, the first thing we did when we were shown the land was to conduct a search. And buying a land, you have to um, ascertain whether the person who wants to lease the said land to you has legal title to the land. So we conducted a search at um, a government office called Lands Commission. And because Jazzy falls under central region of the Republic of Ghana, we had to go and conduct the, the search at Cape Coast Lands Commission. So the results came and it was clear that um, Nana had legal rights to lease the land to the community. That's Black Star Pan-African community. So um, we went ahead to execute what we call an MOU to spell out um, the terms of payments and then how we would go about um, securing the land. So uh, a, a memorandum of understanding was executed between Nana and um, uh, officers or the leaders of um, Black Star Pan-African community. Um, I drafted the necessary document, sent it to Bomani, 
And then they also vetted whatever the clauses were. They okayed it. They, they executed their parts and then um, emailed it back to me. I sent it to the chief, that's Nana Haiti. And then he also exe uh, executed his parts of the MOU. So at that point, we had a valid and a binding agreement with respect to the land. And it spelled out how um, everything around the land, including even payments. So at the, the, along the way, I had to draft the, the, the lease agreement. That's the, the formal lease agreement, which is a legal instrument um, to, to, to show that we, the land, the 15 acre land had been leased to you with the description of the land and coordinates and everything. So um, I drafted the lease agreement um, between Nana, Nana Haiti and Black Star Pan-African Community, um, similar to what we did with the Memorandum of Understanding I sent it to Bumani for the group to look at it, and they, they were comfortable with the lease agreements, and then they executed their parts, sent it back to us, um, and then Nana and his elders also signed their portion. So at that point, the, the lease agreements covering 15 acre land at Jazzy was completed. Um, after, after Nana and his uh, elders signed their portion, I scanned everything and then emailed it back to Bomani and Co. So um, the said documents, the legally completed lease agreements, duly executed by both parties. Um, with the, um, the lawyer acting as the, the, a witness for the said transaction. I acted as a witness for um, Black Star Pan-African Community because uh, obviously I am your legal rep, your legal representative here. So um, as we speak now, the said documents is complete, um, a copy has been given to Bumani and I'm sure maybe um, in due course, or if you've not uh, seen it already, it's the set documents is, is, is available for, for, for your perusal at any point in time. Now, now that we have completed the, the identification, the uh, survey work, and then the acquisition of the 15 acres, um, we have to take steps to do what we call registration. Registration essentially means that now that you have a lease from, from the chief, the chief has leased a 15 acre of Jersey land to the group. It is yours. You have a lease agreement. You have every legal right to commence development of the land, to start construction of your, your preferred uh, apartments or buildings or whatever on the said 15 acres. Now you have to take steps and then register the 15 acre land with the Lands Commission of the Republic of Ghana. Because as it stands now, the, 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 the land has been acquired, duly acquired by the community, but the government is not aware. That's to, to, to break it down. The government is not aware. And by law, once you acquire land, you have to take steps to register it in your interest, to register the, the said land with the government. So there are processes to be followed. You would, you would have to go to the, the Cape Coast Lands Commission, because as I said earlier, Jersey falls within the central region of the Republic of Ghana. And um, it means that um, it's, it's, it falls under uh, the jurisdiction of the central region, which has its own regional lands commission. So if you want to register any land or have any um, official 
governmental transaction in respect of land situated within um, central region, you have to go to Cape Coast Lands Commission. So with the lease agreements that the community has over the 15 acres, we will now have to take steps to register the 15 acre land in the name of the community. Now, um, I, am, I am reliably informed that there, there, there are about um, 50 subscribers or so, 50 or more, I mean, between 50 and 60, um, who have expressed uh, interest in, 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 in the land. I'm not very sure about the, the no, numbers. Yeah, uh, it's 50 of us for, uh, it's 50 of us for phase one, but it breaks down to 50 plots that are sold um, as a combination of uh, different people. But uh, okay. 15 is for uh, phase two, but uh, everyone that's registered and set up for phase one, Okay. Uh, we basically just, uh, look at all of the plots that, that were sold. So that's what we're looking at, the 50 plots, and then that's divided into whatever the, the uh, sum of the registration is. Uh, but I'll continue on, Richard, but uh, the total group of size of us is 65 because we have people for the new phase, and that's okay. how we was able to send uh, the money and all the setup for uh, phase two. Okay, all right, okay, that's fine. So um, at this point, we would have to now register the land the 15 acre land that has been leased to you for a period of 99 years for 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 with the with the government you see um I, somewhere last year in december we the bomani and a group um, um a group of people from your end uh, met the chief i think that was the first time that was their first meeting that was in december last year Yes. Uh, and, yes. Last time and, we met uh, the chief, and we also met yourself. Yes, sure. And um, per the laws of Ghana, um, foreigners cannot be given a 99-year lease. The highest number of years foreigners can have um, can, can can be leased a land, or the, an interest that they can have is up to 50 years. However. Nana took the decision that you are not foreigners. You are, you are back to where you belong. You are one of us. And so for that matter, you couldn't be treated as foreigners. So he would deal with you as if he's dealing with any other person, that is any other Ghanaian who is a citizen of Ghana. So he took the decision that instead of the, 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 the 50 years, he would grant you a 99-year lease and justify it anyway, because um, it is not appropriate. Um, I mean, um, it's, 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 it doesn't fall within the right scheme of things to treat you guys as foreigners. So he, he agreed to give you a 99 year lease on the land. And then all the documents that were drafted and duly executed by Bumani and, and his uh, colleagues, that's uh, your leaders, the, all the documents showed that the land that had been acquired as 99 years. The, the, the chief, uh, Nana, has signed a 99-year lease agreement between himself and Black Star Pan-African community. So as I was saying, now we, um, we had to, because of the number of plots, we had to engage uh, the surveyor to now demarcate the various, the, the, the 15 acres into the 50 plots. Because um, it, must, it must now um, take the surveyor to go on the ground and then pick the individual plots so that, um, let's say, Mr. Michael Morgan will now, if he subscribed to one plot or two plots, uh, uh, what we call a site plan will be prepared in his name so that 
it will reflect that a said person had acquired one plot or two plots. Now, our measurements for a, a, a single plot is 100 feet by 70. So, 100 by 80. Uh, pardon? It should be 100 by 80. Yes. Yes, but um, the, 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 the 180 used to be the, the former uh, uh, measurements. Now, the standard is 170. But with the land Nana, Nana gave, that's the 15 acres, we would be able to get the 180. So you, you could see that Nana, Nana, Nana has been magnanimous by even giving us that 99 years. And then with respect to the, 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 the measurement for a, a single plot, we will have 180 instead of 170. So that, that is what the, 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 the surveyor, that's the work of the surveyor. The surveyor, because as it stands now, it is a, a big land, a 15 acre land. The surveyor will now go onto the land and demarcate the land into individual plots, prepare what we call a site plan. Now, a site plan ought to um, be signed by um, the, the, uh, the surveyor is a licensed one, and then the regional surveyor must also sign on the said site plan. Now, um, after, uh, after the, the, that, the site plan, we will now have to prepare an individual, um, uh, what we call an indenture. Now, this is what will happen. Black Star Pan-African community, they acquired a land, or they, they were leased the land for 99 years. So technically or legally, they are the lessees. So they, they hold the primary 99 year agreement with the chief. Now, the um, Black Star Pan-African community would in turn transfer or what we call in law assignments, will assign a, a portion of the land to individual members or the subscribers. So Black Star Pan-African community acquired a 99 year lease. And then because it is a 15 acre land, after the, the demarcation by the surveyor, as a, 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 what we call an assignment, or an indenture will be prepared for each and every one of the subscribers so that they will have a separate legal document in respect of the land they have acquired. So um, if Bomani, um, uh, let's say, subscribe to two plots of land, or let's say one plot, a, a separate documents will be prepared with a site plan bearing Bomani's name, but at that point, the, the engagement or the legal documents will be between the community, Black Star Pan-African community and Bomani. So Black Star Pan-African community will be the assignor, and then Bomani will be the assignee. Bomani will be the receiver, or um, it's, it's an issue of um, uh, transfer. So transferee and a transferor. You see, because Bo, um, Bomani or the, 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 the community acquired the land and they are giving um, various plots of land to the members who subscribe. Now, with, with respect to the registration, at the Cape Coast Lands Commission, once you do a registration, your, your interest will be plotted and then it will be registered in your name. So we, we intend registering the whole 15 acres of land in the name of Black Star. It will be plotted and it will be registered and there'll be a publication in the dailies, I mean, in our national newspapers to as, as um, uh, ample and um, a clear cut notice to the whole world that 
uh, Black Star Pan African community has acquired 15 acre uh, land at Jersey and they intend to register. So um, if you, you, you think you have an interest right to the, 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 the department, the government department, if you think um, you have an interest in the said 15 acres, and then they will give you and some number of days. Obviously, the land belongs to Nana. It is not incumbent. There is no um, third party who is claiming ownership of what has been given to us. So when the time elapses, now the, the, the Cape Coast Lands Commission will take steps to uh, do their official duties and, and engagements and paperwork. And then the land will now be registered in the name of Black Star. Now, when the land is registered in the name of Black Star, the individual registration, you can also do an individual registration, but you see, before a land can be registered for you, you need something in Ghana we call a TIN number. Unfortunately, you would have to get into the system before you can have a TIN number, because before uh, any registration of land, can be made in your individual names. Now, for now, we have taken steps to register Black Star Pan-African Community with the Registrar General of Ghana, that is the Registrar of Companies. So our, 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 our um, company registration is being processed. We are hoping that in the course of this week, it should be out or by next week, we should have it. And the, 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 once the, the, the entity is registered, that's Black Star Pan-African Community is registered. Once it is registered, we'll be given a TIN number. The TIN number for the, for the entity, that's the community, who will now use that TIN number to proceed with the uh, registration of the 15 acres of land that has been leased to the group. So at this point, once the, the, the entity is registered and we go ahead to register, it is now in the name of Black Star Pan-African Community, which all of you are shareholders or you are, you are, you are members of, of, of the said group. So once it is registered and at the appropriate time, when the, the surveyor is done with the individual um, demarcation of land and then a site plan, individual site plans are prepared and then individual land documents are prepared for all of you. Then with the, the, the same numbers and then your particulars and everything here, we can now proceed to register, the, do a transfer. You know, the transfer has been done already. So you just go ahead to register that transfer that has been made. So it's just a change of name. At the Cape Coast Lands Commission, where your plot is, if they do a search, it will indicate that it belongs to the group. So per the documents you have, the Cape Coast Lands Commission will just change the, the name on your plots, on your individual plots from Black Star and African Community to, let's say, Mr. Michael Morgan. So, so, so then at that point, you have a valid legal document from, um, in respect of the land from Black Star Pan African Community. And then you have gone ahead to register with Cape Coast Lands Commission. And your name will be entered into government um, archives so that anytime someone conducts a search, on, on, on your portion of land, your name will come up. It will no longer be um, Black Star because Black Star, um, after the registration, they have transferred um, title on the land you acquired to you. So, and you have also gone ahead to do, um, um, to, to register or to do the transfer with them. You have gone ahead to register your, the transfer that was made to you or that was given to you by a black star. So this is where we are now. Um, we are waiting for the for the registrar of companies to um, speed up to finalize our company registration, and then with that, 
we can go ahead and register the, the 15 uh, acre land with the, the government. So there are two issues here. As it stands now, you have a binding lease agreement between your good self and Nana. The land has been uh, leased to you. You are free to commence uh, development of the land and do whatever you intend to use the land for. You are free to do that. But uh, it is in our own interest to now register the land with the government. I'll give you an example. When, when we, we were about purchasing the land, the, um, another portion of the land had been acquired by an entity. And that entity went ahead to, to register it. So when we conducted a search, it showed that um, uh, parts, uh, there, there is a portion of the land which does not fall um, into where we are seeking to buy. But when we conducted the, the uh, search, the entity that had registered its interest, its name popped up. So clearly, you see, it is, it is in our own interest that we will register and then have our names documented with the state so that it is, it is always there and nothing can erase it. So um, um, the only thing that we are waiting for is the, the company registration for us to proceed with it because without the company registration, they cannot, the Cape Coast Lands Commission cannot go ahead and do the registration for us. We need the company registration because the, the, the land was procured. It was, it was, it was, it was, the, the, the agreement was sealed between Nana and a, 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 a company. So when once it is the name of an entity, we have to have it duly registered before we can proceed to have it registered with the states. And then the registration, as I said earlier, um, somewhere this week or next week, we should um, be done with it. And then once we have it, then we can proceed to register the land in the name of Black Star Pan-African Community. Um, I think um, I've been reliably informed that that is the phase one, the 15 acres is the phase one um, acquisition. Now there are plans to acquire an extra 50 acres of land. Um, similarly, we've had discussions with the, 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 the chief. We have agreed on everything. And then um, even the, where the 50, the 50 acres and the already acquired 15 acres, which together will give us 65 acres. Uh, fortunately, um, it's all the, the two lands are all lined at the same place. So um, we will have um, a vast land of 65 acres, which um, I think um, at this point, um, um, the, Mr. Kobna, the consultant, is um, working on it. In fact, he, he's, he's, he's done with the clearing of the 15 acres. And then with the 50 acres, the surveyor has gone onto the land to pick the, the, the 50 acres. He would now um, draw what we call a site plan for the 50 acres. He will take it to Cape Coast Lands Commission for that site plan to be approved. Now, the, 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 the site plan which would be prepared by the surveyor will be signed by the surveyor because he is a licensed surveyor, and then it must go to the regional land surveyor for approval as well. So um, somewhere last week, I, I got in touch with him, and then we, we, we got him to kickstart work on the 50 acres. It is in progress. He has already gone ahead to pick the 50 acres. It's now in the process of um, drawing up the site plan for the, the, the for onward transmission to the Cape Coast regional or the, the regional surveyor who is at Cape Coast. If the, the, the law is that the, without the signature of the regional surveyor, that site plan is deemed invalid and we cannot do anything with it. 
So because the, the regional surveyor is, is the one who is tasked with the primary responsibility of surveying all the lands within the region to make sure that the land does not fall within uh, maybe places reserved for um, um, government projects or land acquired for other national um, intentions or projects. So the, 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 it will go through several processes and then finally the Cape Coast, um, the regional surveyor at Cape Coast will now append his signature and then we will have um, a binding or a legally accepted uh, site plan. Then we can now use the site plan which has been um, executed or signed by the, the our surveyor and then the regional surveyor to prepare another lease agreement covering 50 acres. Now, the, um, the, there is another MOU that has been prepared, which I will send to um, Bomani in the coming days. Another MOU covering the 50 acres that is in the pipeline or that is yet to be paid for or acquired. And the 50 acres, um, I think when we engaged Nana on the way to go, he agreed that payment should be made within 12 calendar months. So um, we, are, we, are, we are on it, the, the 50 acres, the price has been agreed, the time frame or the timelines for which payment should be made has been agreed. And then the, the size of the land and all those fine details will be captured in the MOU so that um, the group will also look at it if it is okay um, with them, they will execute their portion, send it to us, just as we did with the first arrangement. Then we'll have a binding um, agreement, or by, uh, I mean, an MOU, a memorandum of understanding in respect of the 50 acres. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm also aware that um, a deposit has been made for, for the uh, payments of the 50 acres, which Nana has duly accept, um, received the said payments. Um, he is not in town at the moment. Nana, the, the, uh, the chief of Jazzy, who is Nana Haiti, also happened to be a, a judge, but his jurisdiction is in the Volta region. And Jazzy is in the central region. So usually he comes around um, on weekends or on holidays or when he's on leave or when there is an emergency um, back at um, Jazzy where he needs to come and address. So um, he, he sits in his courts at uh, somewhere, a town in the Volta region. So when he comes back, he will give me the receipt covering the, in the deposit that was made for the, for the 50 acres so that we can proceed from there. So as it stands now, um, a, an MOU will be um, sent to Bumani in the coming days covering the 50 acres. The surveyor has already gone onto the land to pick the 50 acres. So to add to the already or the existing 15 acres so that um, together we'll have a 65 acre land in all. Then depending on how it will go, um, the uh, consultant governor can um, start clearing the land if um, he, he, he's given the green light to do so. He can start uh, clearing the 50 acres as well. So at this point, um, by, I'm hoping that in the course of this week, we would have the, the company registration so that we can now um, proceed with the registration of, of the, the, the 15 acre land at um, the Cape Coast Lands Commission. Now, now that we have the, the 50 acre, which is in the pipeline and um, we have um, a, some sort of agreement with the chief to purchase the 15 acre, uh, the five zero acre in, in addition to the 15. Um, I don't know if with respect to the registration, we will do 
both the 15 and the 50 acres, that's 65 acres, or we would wait, finish with the 15 acre registration, and then go ahead at a later date to do the 50. That solely rests with you. Oh, perfect. Um, and let me just uh, chime in for just a few uh, seconds. As far as, uh, just to give clarity, as far as the 15 acres, uh, one five, um, each, um, each plot, we're going to divide that into the, the cost of what you're going to get from the Lands Commission. So that's another paperwork I wanted you to cover. That way, uh, we're, and I want uh, us to get something written in details. And also, I'm working on uh, uh, a PDF with uh, the process of everything that Richard just talked about. Uh, so all of us could be educated on the process and, and the cost. But the cost of what all of us are going to pay is what's put together from the survey and the Lands Commission, and it's divided uh, by 50 plots. So if you have one plot, this is what you would pay. And if you have two plots, it's times uh, two. Uh, so that's how uh, that will work. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put everything in writing. Uh, that way, um, every individual will know uh, what their cost is to complete uh, the legal paperwork that Richard is talking about. Because what you paid for or what we paid for was basically land and also administrative costs. And what we did just to step our game up uh, beyond other people is to give you a cost where you, you, the land is covered, uh, administrative costs, as far as this administration fees and administration work, to legal work, to cons consultation, to a whole bunch of other things is covered, including land clearing in the price that you paid. So it's say, so when you see the price, it's a land costs and also administrative costs. And then not included is individual survey and also land registration. So that's what we have on the getting started. And uh, I know sometimes some of us are not on conference calls and things like that, and it's a lot of information, but that's why we had to sign off to make sure everyone understand that we, we only paid for the land and the cost to do all the work. So now everything we're talking about is registration. And I never really got a price on what it costs for individual registration. I've called a bunch of people over the last uh, year and I've gotten costs of anywhere from 700 to 1500. And so, but then again, I realized it's all based on a bunch of different things and what you're actually getting in the package. So what we're gonna present and share, um, it comes out to about 4,000 CDs for registration and 2,000 CDs for survey. And uh, that's, um, so that'll be 6,000 per individual plots. So um, when you uh, do the math on that, it'll be about 1,100 US dollars. And that's to get all of those legal paperwork. So. We want to make sure that everyone has documentation on that process and that th those costs and because that's one of the costs I could never give anyone and I even I've always tried my best to just try to give ideas of the cost saying it's in a high few hundreds uh, but um, to be clear and to be honest I just want to make sure that we put all the documentation together and so everyone knows that this is the cost because we'll, I want to make sure that we have everything presented a lot more clear for the individuals that are joining for the 50 acres that we planned out because most of what we did for the first 15 acres it's kind of like we worked a process and try to figure it out as we went along as best as possible and things like that so that's what i want to clear up with everyone so if you have one plot you're looking at about 1100 if you have two plots you're looking at 2200 so that's what we have worked out uh, so far and richard let me know if i'm clear about those things that we uh, i just talked about sure i'm on the same page with you um the the registration if if the entire the assessment that was given to us at the cape coast lands commission for the 15 acres um is 200,000 now with the 200,000 if we divide it by the 50 plots it means one one um subscriber or one plot is paying 4000 ghana cities for registration now um, I did say that the surveyor would now go onto the land and do the survey work by dividing the plots, each plot into 50 plots. And then he will prepare a site plan. That site plan will be signed by the, the surveyor and the original surveyor as well. Because um, 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 the a site plan ought to be signed by the, the surveyor who who did the survey work, and then a, a, a further endorsement from the regional land surveyor. So, the, and then they will have to do a, a separate 
legal documents, which we will call an assignment, a transfer. And that whole process is 2,000 Ghana cities. So if you add the 2,000 and the, the 4,000, we would now have um, 6,000 to pay, 6,000 Ghana cities for, for, for the, the registration and the individual documentations that will seal your um, uh, um, evidence of ownership of the land. And that's per but, and that's per plot family. So we always got to uh, say that because we have individuals who have uh, more than one plot, and yes. Uh, so we have tried to find the fairest way to work that out, and it's really no fair way other than individual plots. Uh, just like there's going to be certain things where we have as as fees where it's uh it's either individual plots or 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 family that's uh, and things like that. So. Those are things that we just want to be clear on uh, as far as those things. Uh, so um, I have uh, one plot and the rest of my family have uh, three. So we have four together. So we'll be paying that cost times uh, four and we'll just put our money together and then work on this ad net with everybody else's money. And then that land will be uh, completely registered. And then the community center and everything else, uh, when we do per, you know, per, per plot as far as our um, residential, that cost of everything also covers everything else. So we're calculating what, so that when we do the 50 acres, we'll get the uh, complete cost of the entire 50 acres and then we'll divide it times the amount of people, amount of plots that are uh, sellable plots. So if we have a hundred plots, that's what we have to divide it into uh, as far as this plots. So uh, once we finish talking about this, uh, we're gonna be open to questions to make sure that everyone is clear and things like that. So. Uh, Richard, I'll continue. I just wanted to just interject in that for clarity. Sure, sure. So um, basically, whatever processes we we'll go through in respect of the 15 acres is the same thing we will do for the 50. And as you know, the 50, we are now, we've now kickstarted the processes. I'm even yet to send you the, 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 um, the MOU. I mean, to spell out one or two um, engagements and, and clauses in respect of the 50 acres, because we have to agree on the, we have to agree on the, the time frame for payments, the same 99 year lease, um, the, the location of the land. I mean, it's just like the first MOU, but a bit of stuff will change because that is 50 acres. It's not the 15. Well, appreciate that. that that's uh, perfect. And uh, to give another clarity, um, uh, someone asked me about uh, Richard legal fees. Uh, what we have uh, ingeniously come up with is while we're collecting administrative costs, it covers a whole lot of stuff, including consultation and legal situation. Now, there are certain situations if you're trying to connect with Kwabana on certain things, you have to pay him separate. Like if he's arranging things for you there in Ghana and moving you around. And then same thing as Richard, if you're trying to do certain things with him that's outside of land acquisition, and things like that. Uh, so most of what, everything that we're dealing with as far as the cost is based on land acquisition. And um, yeah. using our Africa for the African setup to do everything uh, legally and then and to help us build something completely independent where all of us uh, own it and it's all of our company. Uh, so that's uh, what we have set up to where, um, in, in a little bit, I'm hoping that Richard could talk about uh, bank accounts uh, because uh, mm -hmm. That's another thing too, once we get our incorporation completed, we want to be able to set up a separate bank account for Black Star and African community and have our board or certain people manage it and they'll manage the accounting and everything. And what, I've, what I've set up is not something sustainable. I, um, as you can see my eyes, I look you know, burned out, but it's a lot of work and I hate has to get done. So I'm willing to do the hard lifting at the beginning, but eventually everything has to be turned over to us as a community. Um, and that's what we're doing. Our uh, Richard Kwabana. So uh, all of us are being paid to this work on all of this stuff. And uh, we've done a one year straight uh, commitment where we have communicated and work on this thing together to make it simpler for the rest of us. So family, um, the administrative cost is covering a lot of the things to make it simpler for you. Even when we go to try to arrange certain things um, to get your citizenship work permits and all those other things, we eventually have to put something else in the, the pot to kind of work it out as far as, but uh, working with Richard and uh, one or two other lawyers that will eventually add and Kwabana and one or two other consultants, we'll work that out to where 
it works out very inexpensive for us to do all of these processes. And the issue is a lot of times we try to go to Ghana, we try to do all of this on our own, and then it's a ridiculous amount of money. So the strength in numbers have made it easier for, for all of us, uh, including me, even my family that are coming and other people that are coming, uh, because all the things that we wanted to do a long time ago realized that it's just cost too much because Africa is not as cheap as people think. And you know, certain things in Ghana are expensive. And one of the things is registration. So, um, you know, we're just working our energy to, together and corporate, corporate economics to cut the cost of things and make sure that we can pay the best representation. So family, thanks uh, for everybody who has made your initial deposit and paid those admin costs and everything because it has literally propelled what 16 years of failure from Garvey Town. Um, and we have done all those things that they say couldn't be done in one year. Uh, so anyway, uh, Richard, I'll proceed again. Uh, and then when you clear up on what you're talking about, this, uh, let us know about uh, our options for the bank account as a group and also as individuals. Yes. Um, now, with the bank accounts, no bank would open an account for you without a TIN number. Now, if we are opening the, the, a bank account in the name of Black Star Pan-African Community, we have to show proof of company registration. Now, when we show proof of company registration and we want to open a bank account, when, when you, you, you come, because, because you, you guys, none of you um, has a TIN number, Ghana TIN number, you would have to get into the system. Then we will have to take steps to get a TIN number for you. Once you get a TIN number, I apologize. You mentioned PIN number a few times. What I want us to do is uh, explain to everyone. Oh, okay. PIN number. A TIN number, number. Yes. yes. It is tax identification number. That's tax. Tax identification number. These days, um, things have changed. You cannot do anything without a unique TIN, num tin number. That's the TIN, tax identification number. If you want a passport, you have to provide your TIN. If you want to register land, you have to provide your tin. You want to even clear goods at the, air, um, at the, at the, at the port, you have to provide your tin. In fact, nothing gets done now without a tin. The, you can't open a bank account without a tin. So now that we, we uh, and that's the reason why with the regis company registration, we had to proceed with the registration of the company in the name of uh, we, um, the directors were um, Nana and Kwabna. Now, it is just temporal. Once you get into the system and you get your, your TIN number, you can, um, the, the directors can be changed. Uh, exactly. So we have a board of directors and that's what we do when we get things in place. So uh, family, we have a bunch of strategies that we have literally worked on for a whole year. Yeah. Um, and that's the difference between why it looked like everything just got done so quick because we were we had everything planned out. And so you compare the same thing with other people. They t tell you it takes 5, 10, 20 years and so to do all this stuff. And it doesn't. You just have to be committed to getting it done right and make sure you take care of your business. Yes. Because if, if um, you want to register a company um, under these conditions, it means you have to... Um, go through another channel where we call the Ghana Investment Promotion Commission. That, that, that place, they will treat you as a foreigner, a foreign investor, and you are supposed to declare some amount of money. It's, it's a whole, it's a cumbersome process. So what we need to do now is to have the entity Black Star Pan-African Community duly registered with the, the um, Registrar of Companies. Then we will be issued with a certificate. From there, when you get into the system, we can now take steps to get you a TIN number. Without a TIN number, you can't even assume directorship of the company because you would have to file um, certain things in your name and your TIN, TIN number, that TIN will be required. You see, so the company will be registered, will have it on paper as a duly, created company so that anytime we finish the the ten processes you can now seamlessly assume directorship and then ownership of the company and then um nana nana and um Kobda, 
they acted as directors and then as usual are acted as the secretary to the company because usually lawyers are um, the secretaries to companies they, they they do the legal stuff um for for companies so that's where we are now and then we were there we have the option to open an, a bank account now with the company or and then once we open a bank account now the signatories to that bank account will be the directors so and um, we could hold on with the with the with the with the bank accounts now and then when you when you get into the system and you get a tin number then and when you assume directorship of the company then we can go ahead and create the company we can create the and create a, a, a bank account we can create the bank account too now so that later when you assume directorship of the company you will just change the signatories to that account so that is an option um, we can also look at the, the 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 processes are one the the entity black star pan african community ought to be registered now if we want to create a bank account we would have to show a um, proof of registration of the community and then the directors must who will be signatories to the account must have a ten. And as it stands now, as I've explained earlier, uh, we don't have a thing. Um, you, 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 you have not um, gone through the processes to, to be given a thing by the um, government of Ghana. So you cannot be a director of, of that company or you cannot um, have a bank account created where you'll be a, a, a signatory because usually the... the, the, the the uh, directors, when when they they they, they are they are their company is registered, their details will be taken, their tin number will be taken, and it will be um, uh, entered into government records. So when you want to open a bank account, to they will ask who are the signatories to the account, and then the directors usually are the signatories to the account. And once we 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 don't have that tin. Uh, we cannot even one we cannot be directors as of now and the bank cannot deal with us because we can't um, um we cannot have the 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 the, the bank accounts bearing the signatories of P, uh, uh, people who are not directors the bank will insist on the directors of 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 the company so um i i i my my uh, advice is we should hold on with the bank accounts for now so when you come for now the 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 company registration our main focus will, should be to to have the the land registered in the name or um, with the government using the name black star pan african community so that so that when 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 the company registration is done, we can go ahead register the, the land in your name so that you can have your land. Now, when you get into the system, then we can we can we can now um, take steps to have you acquire a tin number. Then we can um, change the directorship to whoever you would elect as your your directors. Then now you can assume. Um, um, total control over the company and then go ahead to to open a bank account. Perfect, uh, Richard. Perfect. Uh, I'm trying to see if, uh, if there's anything that we didn't cover, but uh, I'm not sure if Kwabana is still on. Let's uh, see if he's on it and uh, at least give him a chance to share. Let me see. Uh, yeah. I think he and might have dropped off because, you know, when you're in Ghana, you gotta be prepared for these calls because it may eat up the. Uh, yeah. All right, um, that's fine. So is not yes. We'll just we'll just uh, continue. Uh, go ahead, uh, yes. yes. So um, at this point, the registration, that's the like, the registration with the the company registration with black uh, with registrar of companies in Ghana is very 
um, important. It's, it's very crucial here. Fortunately, we have gone through the processes and we are now waiting for the certificates to come out. We have, we have filled the form, everything. Um, they asked for, even as, as an attorney I, um, who is acting as a secretary to the company, I had to provide my TIN number. And as I said, nothing gets done now without TIN number. So, and that is the reason why we couldn't use the leaders of Black Star Pan African community to create that, um, um, to register that company. Uh, all right, that's uh, perfect. Uh, I, I see Kwabna connecting. Uh, excellent. Uh, Brother Kwabna, um, uh, give me a few seconds and I'll connect you in. Uh, family, I really appreciate everybody listening to everything. I know it's a lot of information. Um, I've been reading over the stuff and me and Richard have talked and talked. Uh, so the good thing about it is that we have all of that on recording, so we can also go back and look at it. And I uh, will get some more uh, questions for you also, Richard, as long as you can hold on for a little longer. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to uh, just mention to everyone is um, that during the whole time during lockdown, uh, all of us were communicating and working on what we were working on. And that's why I'm always telling folks, uh, let's focus on what we need to focus on because other people in America uh, that look just like us were doing other things. And um, I just believe in us just being strategic and tactical in trying to make this work. Uh, so what you see is just our best strategy based on uh, working with a lot of other people that, um, you know, that had shortcomings or didn't want to put the work into where we can build what we're building like this. It's work. So that's why we're mentioning to everyone to kind of work in your committees, uh, communicate as best as possible and work on things to where we can leverage the amount of things that has to be done. Uh, so Brother uh, Kwabana, um, uh, which I've known since 07 as uh, my tour guide, um, when we first connected and it was uh, one of our biggest group of 42, uh, that's when I that's literally uh, 10 months after I first went to Ghana. And um, he's been this a real brother from the beginning and been very helpful. And we've been able to just work on many different business. So he's, he's someone that I've we've dealt business with a lot of money and you know, I gotta just give it to him now. We've been good with the money situation to where we've never had issues and problems because you know it is when it comes to money, some things just go funny and things like that. So uh, basically he's probably the number one person I trust the most in Ghana itself. Um, and, um, you know, so he was a perfect person for this position and he has a lots of contacts and he has spent, seemed like a lifetime just being, uh, you know, being valuable to uh, our brothers and sisters from the diaspora and also to his country. He's very, you know, you know, very diplomatic and you know, very patriotic uh, in his country. And I just love that energy um, and things like that. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, we love Ghana so much because we have good people there that's willing to work with us to build something. So. We're trying to be that example to where we show people, uh, our brothers and sisters, that we can come together in a small group or a big group and actually figure things out and work towards progress. That's why a lot of times, family, honestly, I literally don't get involved in a bunch of other things and I stay focused and work on what we're doing and things like that. So, Brother Kwabna, if you want to, uh, if you can give everyone an introduction about yourself, your background, and all of the things that you've been involved with to make uh, you a good representation of us uh, to be a part of this community on the consultation situation. And also um, let everyone know after that, uh, what we talked about as far as how we're gonna work on talking to the builders and connect to where we all get the best price for building and things like that. Uh, Kwab, now all you have to do is just press uh, unmute and then uh, you can start talking. Okay, am I clear now? Uh, perfect, I can hear you. Just tilt your head uh, yeah. tilt your head so we can see you better on the camera. All we can see yeah. is perfect, there you go. Uh, down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, so I've worked with Bumani since 2007 and um, I've worked as a, a tour guide and tour coordinator uh, for Africa for the Africans and other uh, companies um, I started as a freelance tour guide. I've been working for over 20 years now in the tourism industry. Um, first of all, um, I'm a Ghanaian. I'm a Ghanaian. And uh, I know Ghana very well and West Africa very well. Uh, my brother Napo says something that I want to chip in a word. What is uh, uh, about the registration? My brothers and sisters, although Nana has given you 90 years, 99 years of lease, 
One other thing that it's so important is that if you don't register the land, if you don't register the land and uh, in your name and someone else from somewhere registers, when it goes to courts, the land is not yours. But if you register the land in your name, in uh, uh, either your personal name or in uh, uh, Pan-African community, and it's known by the governments, the government entity that registers, nobody can take it from you. That one day I have to assure you, nobody can take it from you. Yeah. Thank you. And most of the things that I want to say uh, has been said by my brother, Napo. I want you also to know that sometimes myself, uh, uh, the lawyer, and then Nana, Nana had to drive over five hours to Accra. Napo has to drive about two and a half hours. I have to drive about two hours, and we all meet at Nana's palace. We spend hours deliberating on this land, how to do this, how to do that. We want to get everything ready for you. About clearing of the land, my brother uh, Bomani, uh, uh, I told him that, hey, you know what, I'll do that. Because as a consultant, I have to make sure that everything that you wanted is ready for you. Uh, we, he sent some money. We hire a bulldozer to clear everything on the land. It will interest you to note that currently, uh, two of our brothers and sisters who are part of you, who are part of the land, are in Ghana, brother Leonard, Barnes, and then the wife. I took them to the land and they were surprised. They saw it, they were so happy, and they posted some pictures on uh, Facebook and other places for you to see that it is true. Um, the lawyer have said a lot. Branapu have said a lot. Yeah, um, we spent uh, Kwabna, as yeah. far as what the lawyer covered, uh, that's fine. But uh, the main thing I want to talk with you about is us, uh, you know, you connecting with us on the ground as far as a consultant and dealing with the building yeah. and making sure that the pillars are set up to where when any of us go, yeah, that Brana, is I've got uh, into. yeah, that is where I've got into. That's what I've got into that, uh, the pillars, first of all, we have four corner pillars that has been set there already. And then the surveyor, money was sent, and I gave it to the surveyor. They are molding the blocks, uh, the pillars on the land. They are molding the pillars on the land. The land has been cleared, and they are molding the pillars on the land, which each and everyone's uh, plot number and name or initials will be written on the pillar. Each and everyone's name and it will be written on the pillar. And when you come, you see your name and then your plot number according to the names that uh, Brabomani sent to us. So that one uh, is rest assured the, uh, immediately they finished molding the 120 pillars, the uh, Soviet starts doing the demarcation and everything. I'll be there myself. Branapo has been there to see. Uh, Nana has been there. And immediately the Soviet is ready, uh, pillars are ready, we all move to sites, and then uh, 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 it just will be done. All right, perfect, uh, Brother Kwabna. The next thing I want you to talk about is the builders. Um, uh, what we, you and I have been doing is um, we've been talking to builders, and I'm, as I talk with them and just you know basically set things up and let them know that you're representing Thank you. us. Uh, the, the goal was to, uh, to, to meet uh, individual builders, and uh, once you meet yeah. them, uh, to just talk with them and let them know that this is serious. We're doing long-term business, and then eventually, once we get sure. things connected with them, the goal is for us to arrange legal contracts. Uh, uh, through um, you know, attorney yeah. Richard, to where we have legal agreements so people are not playing yeah. games and things like that. And uh, I want to just honestly say to sure. everyone, um, ever since the situation that happened with Garvey Town, 
I've just been dedicating, I've tripled up on, on, on just making sure no. that this works off us. So uh, Kwabna is going to fill in that last part you, to where we left off at, to where we wanted yeah. to literally build our home and things like that. But also Kwabna, I want to let everyone know that is uh, we have several different builders that covers all the spectrum of the buildings options that we sure. talk about. So individuals can either use those builders that we're going to have organized just as options. And our goal is to get them to do portfolios and come up with estimates and things like yeah. that. So it's going to take a little working with them. Uh, but at the same time, to family, just like we talked about as far as flexible options, uh, because that's what we didn't have at Garvey Town. If you have a, your own builder and you want to get them to work yeah. things out, you're absolutely fine to bring them along. But make sure that uh, everything is cleared. And, and then if you need to uh, uh, set up an illegal agreement. Uh, uh, Richard is available, yeah. and uh, all of these sure. things that deal with acquiring the land and building, we're working it out with administrative costs as best as possible, yeah. so we can save a lot of money, money. Because uh, especially yes. you know, once we get more and more new people coming, yeah. that will help. But I come, uh, 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 go ahead. I just want uh, to make sure that we're clear about uh, those things and this. Yeah, yeah. Now, so far, so far, I have interviewed and talked to five of the builders. One is a, a container building. Another one is a mud house building. And then three of them are bricks building. I've spoken to Terry that he, uh, he said he's going to send me a uh, uh, breakdown of the cost and everything. Uh, I've also talked to uh, um, uh, the container builder. Uh, he sent me some pictures. I think I've sent it uh, uh, to, uh, and I also sent, I have more container pictures there. Uh, it was only one person who was very rude. So uh, uh, I just, uh, uh, I, I called him twice and uh, that was the end. He was very, he is uh, very rude. So let me say that. But the five of them, uh, they are very nice people. Uh, four of them have visited their office. I've seen what they are doing. And uh, I think they are doing a very great job uh, that we can call on them to do or to put up this, uh, your plan for us. The only problem that they are having is that they want to know uh, from you, almost all of them, whether you are providing your own uh, building plan or they are providing building plan for you. Uh, because going to get a cost, uh, you have to rent someone to do the costing for you. And then you have to pay this person. Now, after paying this person and the, uh, uh, the person doesn't get a job, they wanted me to stick my neck 100% that they will get a job when uh, uh, they give me this and that and this and that. So I also assure them that um, it depends on what you are doing. It depends on what we are doing. If you are doing a good job and our brothers and sisters come around, we will definitely invite you to come. And then uh, we will all sit down to write an MOU. And then we'll go ahead. When they get a note, we all signed. As for me, my job is to uh, uh, write a recommendation about you. So when I write a recommendation about you, it has, it's up to them to choose. I want a mud builder. I want a container builder or I want a brick builder, or whatsoever, then they have to choose. So that is where we've got into. Even tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, the, uh, the last person that you gave me, um, I've forgotten the name. Yes, I'm going to their office tomorrow to see uh, what they have done. And then from there, they will take me to the field to see some of the buildings that they have put up there. They, they, I will definitely take some pictures and send it to you for you also to see the work that they are doing. Well, perfect, uh, Kwabna. Uh, you have anything else to add before we open up for Q&A? Uh, that way uh, individuals can ask you direct questions and also Richard questions. And then once you guys are finished, we're going to move into a uh, private sessions where we just have our presentations uh, from different committees. Oh yeah, if, there, if anyone has a question. All right, let me change the view. All right, I'm in gallery view. Uh, we have uh, 31 of us. Uh, so family, um, um, 
For those who have questions, unmute yourself, give your question and direct it to who you have the question for myself, Richard, or um, uh, Kwabina. Hi, this is Gail. Could you please repeat the five builder types again that are available that you have? Okay. One, I have a container builder. He uses container to build a house, other story building or Hosu River, three bedroom, four bedroom, Hosu River. I have a, a mud house builder. They can build in any angle, whether round, square, Hosu River, whether story building or Hosu River. Uh, the container builder like this, after that, they do the paneling inside. I've seen uh, 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 two of their job, and it was so nice, air-conditioned everything. Uh, the mud house also the same thing. And then the three of them are bricks, bricks that are moved in Ghana here. Bricks that are, uh, we are bricks, let me say bricks builders. So those, these are the five people that I have so far interviewed. Hi, this is Toya. Um, I was wondering if is the mud builder that you mentioned the same as rammed earth, or um, would you also? Yes, have exactly. The that thing? is the rammed earth. Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, madam. Is the is the mud builder the same as one of the three container? Mud house or brick, are they, or is that an addition? Ma, the mud uh, builder is different. Uh, it, it is different from the oh, bricks. Mud. Yes, mud. Yes. Okay. It's different from the container builder and it's different from the bricks builder. Thank you, too. Hi, Hi Kwabina. Hi, 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 my sister. Adele. How are you? I am blessed. Good, good. Listen, um, I just had a question about the, the um, contractors. Now, I know that, you know, typically speaking, you know, Africans versus um, what Americans understand as contractors and, and the type of work and the scope of work, I think it would be helpful to let them know that what you're trying to do is vet the contractor. So you're not guaranteeing them work, but you're just making sure that they're not going to, that they're legitimate and that their work is legitimate and that they, um, they're not, you know, so get like references and stuff like that of people that have worked with them. And then we put them on the list because if you don't, if you're not vetting them um, and you just, you know, you putting them on a list, I think they might expect that they're going to get clients. But there might clients. be some people that might not get clients. Like if, if, if nobody decides to use a mud um, contractor, then the mud contractor may not get a client. But if, if everybody decides to use the shipping container contractor, but the shipping container contractor is no good and some of the housing that they've done don't last, then that's a problem. So I think that if you say it in terms of vetting them, and I don't know what the word is that you can use in Ghana that it equates vetting just making sure that they're authentic yeah. and whatever but that's that i think is is the way to go thank you so much my sister i love my, that now i always tell that is one of the things that is one of the things that i told them that i am not guaranteeing you that you get a job i'm a consultant and as a consultant uh what i supposed to do is to make sure two, three, four people uh, are, are very good, not 10, 20, even if it is two people, two co companies that are very good, that when they come, when they come, I will present them to you. Tell them, uh, tell you the type of job that do, they do. And then uh, you will be able to select based on my recommendation, based on my recommendation, uh, you can select, okay, let me also select this person. Let me, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. Then you can also ask them any questions that you want, any question at all concerning their business, concern, because when you arrive, when you arrive, um, we're going to have a deba. 
I'm going to have a Deva at the Cheese Palace. And I'm going to invite these people also, all the contractors, to come to the Deva ground because they have questions to answer. So this is, this is what I've already told them. Uh, I've never, I will not, and uh, I've never guaranteed anyone that is going to get a job. And I will not do that. Uh, uh, until you people come and you also said, I want this, I want that, then you will sign an MOU with them. I'm not the one going to sign, but you are mm -hmm. going to sign MOU with them. But with me, I'm just going to be a witness. Thank you. Kobina, I have a question for you. Can you hear me? Okay, sister. Yes, I do. Um, the builders that you are vetting, are they a one-stop shop type um, builder? And what I mean by that is I don't want to have to go somewhere and get the architecture drawn up and then bring it to the builder. Are, do they have their own engineers? Do they have their own concepts? Do they have plans that we can look at and, and choose from? Yes. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. Exactly so. Yes. It's a one-stop shop one stop shop they have architectures there they have painters they have masons they have uh, uh what do you call uh decorators if you want to decorate your room the, these are yes exactly these are the people that uh uh, uh have interviewed so it's like a, a one stop shop that you're going to get everything thank you thank you Thank well, you. Good evening. Also, my does anyone have any questions for our attorney? Uh, I'll probably I do. I do. Seconds. I have uh, a question. So family, I have a question family, for um. Everyone, can you hold on for a few seconds? And also, family, um, Richard is on the line, and uh, we have to let him go sooner or later. But I'm still trying to get some legal questions based on Richard's presentation. I understand that everyone wants to talk about the building, but uh, please just throw in some of the questions for Richard so we can uh, use this time to answer the questions before we release them. Yeah, I have a question, uh, uh, Richard. Uh, yeah. when, the, when it comes to bank accounts, can we continue using our bank accounts in Ghana, our debit cards, um, our visas, and things of that nature? How would that work um, if we got a long-standing relationship with our bank and whatever? Is that a possibility, or do we have to get a new account in Ghana? Thank you. Yes. Um, as I explained earlier, um, if you want to operate a bank account here, be it uh, an individual account for each one of you, you would need to go to the bank, give your particulars to the bank, your details and everything, and then the bank account will be opened for you. Now, the problem you would have is that you don't have a tin. So without a tin, you cannot right. Right. you cannot have a bank account opened for you. But if you have your 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 cards, your MasterCards, your Visa, your what have you, they are acceptable in Ghana. You can access our ATM can dispense money okay. in our local currency. So um whether it is Chase Bank out there or whatever bank and you have the, the, the whatever card you have. Once you slot it into our ATM, you would, you would, um, our ATM would dispense Ghana CDs to you. And then you can use that to make all kinds of payments too in our hotels, anywhere you go. It's just that you cannot have a bank account created right. in Ghana because you don't have a TIN number and you, 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 you cannot have a bank account opened for you. Okay, uh, yeah, and, and, and the thing about that, if a person is receiving social security uh, from the United States and is going to his bank now, so how would that work? Would I still be using my same account in America to, uh, receiving all my funds or? Uh, no, if, if, if you, no. You'd, your, your bank accounts in America, you see, even the the but there are, there are, there are, uh, money transfer services. Okay. Okay. In exactly. Ghana, yes, mm -hmm. money transfer services. There are there are loads of them. We have Western Union. We gotcha. have. Um, okay. Um, um, World remits. We have um, 
uh, MoneyGram, a host of them. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. Thank. But when it comes to opening no. off, I understand that you got to have a TIN number. I do yes. understand that. One. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, Richard. Yeah. Richard. Now, I, I have a question. I, I also want to. I also want to explain that. Uh, the TIN number is tax identification number. Right. Someone may ask, what is TIN? What is TIN? It's tax identification number. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Richard, I have a question. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So um, you said uh, each individual plot owner will have to register, we register their plot. Yes. And that we can't do that without a TIN number. Yes. Okay. So no. I want to explain how do we get a TIN number? Because you, okay. you keep saying getting into the system. Well, what does that mean? Uh, when, I, I mean, um, maybe an informal way of saying when you get to the, 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 the motherland, getting into the system, I mean, maybe that's what I meant. But when it comes to um, um, tax identification number, that's how it works. You see, once you, you, you have acquired the land, the land is now in the name of the entity, the group, the Black Stars Pan-African community, that the land was acquired using that name. So the land belongs to that group, which you are all subscribers or members. Now, we, we have to take steps to register it in the name of the group. And that is why when the registration with the Registry of Company is completed, we can now go to Cape Coast Lands Commission with the with our with the certificates of incorporation. Then, um, um, uh, with the when when the the company is registered, it will be given automatically a tin. A tin will be generated for the company. Mm -hmm. So the day we will be given the 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 certificates of incorporation, there will be a tin. A unique thing for Black Star Pan African community. It will be it's, it will be generated and then added to the uh, certificate. So the the group will now have a unique thing number. Now with that, we can go ahead and register the the land in the name of the group with the individual registration. Once the land is registered in the name of the group. And the individual, maybe that's why I said when you get into the system, that's when you come to Ghana. When you come to Ghana and then um, your thing is formalized and you are given a thing, by that time you have your unique, um, what we call an indenture here, what we call land document given to you by the group. So let's say if um, uh, Madam Barbara, Madam Barbara acquired one plot of land. The, the group Black Star Pan African Community will prepare a, a document. Uh, we call it a land document. We call it an indenture. Or technically or legally, it is called an assignment. So now Black Star Pan African Community will assign one plot out of the 15 acres to Barbara. As uh, Barbara, this is your one plot which you acquired. <laughs> now, when Barbara wants to register and put her name, um, um, with the Cape Coast um, Lands Commission, because the, the land has been registered already in the name of Black Stars. The, 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 the change to Barbara's name is, is easy. It is, it is not any cumbersome process because it's already registered. So it, it, it's, it's a seamless um, um, transition to get um, um, Barbara's name on her one plot which will no longer read if once the registration is done and a, a search is conducted on that one plot, the name Black Star will not appear again. It will be Barbara's name because Barbara has, um, has been given a transfer of that one plot and she, she has gone ahead to put her name, register her name on that one plot. And it, is, it will remain so for, for as long as the lease um, um, runs. This is similar to what we have here when you start an LLC and you get it incorporated, you get a TIN number here as well. Sure. So sure. it's very, sure. it's very, it sounds like it's very similar. Sure. 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 Exactly. 
Exactly so. So as I explained earlier, the thin number is now at the heart of everything. Without thin number, you cannot even import um, 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 goods. Where well, because you are the 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 at the at the um, um, uh, at the harbor, you will be asked yes. to provide your thin number. You see, when you want to do anything, you want to register land, you want to do a passport, you want to do a driving license, you want to do a thing, you have to provide your thin number. Without the thin number, the process will be stalled and you have to now go and um, go to our revenue office. The thin numbers are usually generated by our revenue office. We call it Ghana Revenue Authority. You see, of course, for tax purposes. So they, they generate the thin numbers. So um, in this, with, with registration, with, with, um, with respect to the registration of the company, the registrar of company will work directly with the, the Ghana Revenue Authority, and then they will generate a thin number for the company. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right, Richard, I have a question. Yes. Um, my question is, um, is, are you guys working with the diaspora offices that are part of Ghana government and or any other ministry, um, immigration or whatever that's part of Ghana government to make some, and I'm not saying just the bank stuff, but I'm, I'm talking in general, to make some of this process a little bit um, less difficult for you all. Um, because I know that Ghana is, it prides itself on having a strong diaspora office that helps promote and it helps to get people to Ghana and it helps to, you know, smoothen some of the rough waters that might occur when they're doing, making the transition. I'm just curious. Um, yes. Um, we have, we have um, um, a ministry um, designated to take care of diasporan relations and what have you. But um, with regards to this, our, our setting, you see, um, we, we haven't gotten to that extent because we are, um, there, there are laws regulating everything. If, if Black Star Pan-African community wants to have um, um, uh, the, the entity registered, and then the directors will be um, people, I mean, I'm using the word um, quotes, foreigners. I mean, people who are not Ghanaians, yes. People who are, who, who, who are yet to, to be, even though you are Ghanaians, you are part of us. People who are, I mean, yet to be legally um, recognized as Ghanaians. Of course, culturally and um, sentimentally and everything, I mean, um, roots wise and everything, you are, you are, you are Ghanaians. But I mean, uh, legal stuff. People who are yet to assume legal status as Ghanaians, um, there, are, there, there are laws regulating that arrangement. And it says that if you are not a Ghanaian and you want to open a company, the, 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 the processes are different. They are different. You have to declare some amount of money and what have you. And once there is the intention for you to come, you are, you are, you are coming to the motherland, you want to have um, a dwelling place here, you want to settle here. Once there is that intention, um, the, we, we, we devised a strategy that, okay, we would have the company registered. When you, when you that's when I said, when you get into the, when you get into Ghana, then we will now take steps to have you um, given that um, Ghanaian the, um, formalization so that you go through the system if um, by way of um, acquiring a tin, which is very important, then um, we can now go to the, the registry of company, write what we call a resolution that now we are changing the directorship of the company from um, Nana Nana and Kobda to so so and so. By that time, you would have gotten your your thing, and then we can now do the switch over so that you can now take um, full control over the, the the entity. But as it stands now, 
we cannot proceed to register without in um, um, re uh, register the company with um, people who are not Ghanaians to 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 assume um, directorship role when when um, we, we we could have done that without going through um, this um, laborious process and then it involves um, money you have to declare some amount of money so um, for now the, the the company will be registered in the name of um, the community with Kwabna, the consultants, and Nana as the directors. But it is temporal. Once um, the, the you people get the necessary legal requirements, which you can use to now uh, effect changes at the at the registrar of company, that will now take out the two directors, and then you would now assume the directorship role. And that's, that, that is it because at this point, we couldn't have registered the company without any local involvement because of the, the, the TIN number. If, if it, it could be registered just by providing names, we would have taken the names of your executives, of your leaders to just do the, the registration. But there are, there are laws regulating um, people coming from um, um, outside Ghana when they want to register an entity. And then there are laws regulating people within Ghana who want to register a company. So if we take the, the, the um, we want to register the company in the names of people coming from outside, there, there, there are special arrangements which um, I don't think we are in the position to, to, to meet those financial obligations. So we went for the, for the, um, safer of the two options to, to, to get the company registered so that at a later date, that's why I advise that with a bank account, we have to hold on. When you now come um, to Ghana and then you acquire your, 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 your bank, uh, your ten, then we can now create, um, um, get the, the, the directorship of the company changed and then you can now have bank accounts for the company. But of course, the bank accounts for the company is, I don't think it's limited. I don't think it, it will be more than three or four. But now, with your, when, when you are in Ghana and you now have your, your TIN number, you can go to the bank and open your individual bank accounts. It's so easy. I have a question. Yes. Um, so what I hear you saying is after our land is registered individually, we'll, uh, we'll obtain the TIN number. Once we get that TIN number, then will we be able to individually open a business without going through the regular $250,000 uh, and all of that regulation? Is that what I hear you saying? Yeah, you see, with, 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 with um, the... the um, you, if you want to open a business using your, your, your TIN number, you see, you want to open a business, your, 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 your passports will, will determine, we have something we call residency permits. There is the, there is the um, to have the residence permits and with um, granting you some, some of the resident permits um, is tied to work or business. You see, some um, by virtue of marriage, some by virtue of property acquisition, uh -huh. so if you, you, you intend to do business, uh, um, we can take steps with the Ghana immigration to get you a resident permit, which is tied to business. So would you recommend us applying for that residency immediately after we register the property? I myself am not going to conduct business. But I know some of the people in the group want to open up a business. That's why I'm asking the question. So would you recommend that as soon as we get our properties individually um, registered, that we then register for reg residency? And can you help us with that? Yes. Well, let's, let's, let's um, one turn at a time. Let's okay. get there. Yes. <laughs> okay. um, because um, it would, it would um, depend on the, the, how the processes will go. At this, at this point, we, we intend to, even the, the acquisition of the 10, 10 number 
it's it's uh, we are not even there yet because with the tin number you have to come to ghana before we can embark on that process so when you are in ghana we can take up one um, these issues one after the other well hopefully i will be there in december so i have to wait until december to get my property registered my plot registered in my name and get the tin number is that what you're telling me yeah, so now, now the immediate task is to get the, the, the whole 15 acre land registered in the name of the community. Now, after um, the Sovia is in the process of getting you your um, individual land documents in your name. Now, when the land documents in your name, you can register your name with the, the, the Cape Coast Lands Commission. But you need a, a, a ten number to do that. Do you get it? So with a ten number, with a ten number, um, I don't want to say it here, but um, once we we are able to 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 um, get get in the the requirements that they I mean in respect of the the charges with the Cape Coast Lands Commission, we would we would see how to to process your tin number i'm not assuring you but um we could we could do something about your so that you have your your tin number but um i i don't want to give that assurance now that a tin number can be processed in your absence but we would we would see if it is possible wow yes. i'd like to go back to um ada's question about um some sort of place in Ghana where they're, uh, they want us to come back to, to Ghana and they are making uh, preferences so that it will make it easier for us to, to, to come over. Do you know if there's anything already in place at such a maybe embassy, I don't know what they call it, but where we can just go to that one spot and get uh, whatever requirements that we have to become citizens or whatever. Is there any one place like that where they are catering to people who are coming from America to stay? Well, there, we have um, the Foreign Affairs Ministry and um, we have um, a, a, a department or a DEX that takes care of even even the, the tourism ministry. Um, they also take care of diasporan issues. But um, you see, when it when it when it comes to um, the issue about business and citizenship, there are legal processes to be to be followed. And um, that is why um, the, 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 you, would, you would have to go through um, a certain criteria. You have to satisfy a certain um, requirement to, to, to be able to qualify to even um, be granted citizenship. Now, that, that um, office, there is an office like that in Ghana, but as to whether they can um truncate um the processes for you that one i cannot assure you because i know that to to assume citizenship there are processes to to you would have to go through and then what they can do is to offer um, um assistance and guidelines but the the processes laid down must be observed but um as to um maybe uh, making sure that you 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 get it uh, without going through the normal requirements. That's one I cannot um, assure you on that. But there, there there is an office that deals with diaspora relations and all that. But you see, what 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 we what we are looking at at this point is the registration of our land, which which which. Um, it has nothing to do with the, the said office because it's even though um, we are we are we are uh, acquiring the land in the name of the community, the land ought to be registered, 
and that's one that yes so i just wanted to be clear so we can have land and not be a citizen is that is that not a conflict i mean so so um when when you you come to ghana and you 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 intend to stay you will need resident permits you will need resident permits and um most often the resident permits is tied to work or business or something or marriage or something now where, but, where the, but like um kim i may not be coming for marriage or for for um business, business. Mm -hmm. I'm just coming to retire. So what about yes. what about people like us? Yes. So you 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 have acquired property here. You've acquired mm -hmm. property. So um I mean based on that um um the the, the immigration office will, will vet um your 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 application and then your your you you can be um, you would be given a resident permit. It's an application you 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 would have to um, put through, and then it will be considered. So what if they decide that I can't be a resident? It won't. It won't. It won't. It won't be refused. It won't be refused. What happens to my land if I can't be a resident? Yeah, it won't be refused because they You get they get a some funds every year from you re-registering. Oh, it's an annual registration. Yeah. Well, I think it is annual. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, so it, it, it won't be it won't be refused. Okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, because there are dollars so, attached to it. Yes. So Richard, Richard, this is Ada again. I'm sorry to to yes. keep to keep at it again with this thing. So yes. when I was in Ghana uh, last time, we met with the um, Dr. Bennett. Who's the who's in charge of the diaspora forum yes. in in Accra? Do you know who I'm talking about? Dr. Bennett. Dr. Bennett. She's at the diaspora forum in no, Accra. I've not um, I've not met him yet. She she is actually the liaison that's supposed to be in charge of any uh, of diasporas that want to come and do business or move to to Ghana. Her job is the ambassador of the diaspora. That's her sole job is the ambassador of the diaspora. She manages anybody like us who are trying to build, who are trying to have, who are trying to buy, who are trying to have business. And, and one of the things that she said to me is that her office can help facilitate the shortcuts to what we need to do. And all I'm saying is, Consider that as an option that you reach out, and I'm not saying instead of, I'm saying in a conjunction to, reach out to her and to immigration and to the diaspora office that's part of the government of Ghana and let them know that this is a project that is happening in, in Ghana and these are the number of Americans and see what happens. I'm not saying anything else that you shouldn't do anything else. I'm just saying that they need to know because when they know, they understand better how to deal with it because we are a voice, we are a strong voice and together we can say things that, you know, that they may not consider or accurate about the process. And one of the things that Dr. Bennett told me, cause she's, a, she's an American from DC that ended up moving to Ghana and she represents the diaspora, has a diplomatic passport, has diplomatic vehicles. The, go the government of Ghana and the president considers her an ambassador. So she said to me that they are trying very hard so that the process is not difficult for Americans. And all I'm saying is we need to look at those processes and put out a message that this is happening so that they understand that we are here and there's strong presence and that we have a voice. That's it. 
because I'm sure that some of the other communities that are working with government, including Asibu, I'm sure they have government support in everything that they do. So we need to make that whatever process we're trying to do cut a little short. You, we know how uh, you know sometimes government works. We have government here that works just as slow. We understand, but we also understand how to get through the shortcut. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. I do understand you. Um, the, 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 this um, um, Dr. Bene, is, is she a Ghanaian? No. Uh, she's a Ghanaian now. Yeah. <laughs> and and she uh, last year when when I was in Ghana, she helped facilitate the um, the uh, and she has a staff that's Ghanaian, but she helped facilitate the citizenship of many, 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 many people from the diaspora. She had maybe 50 or so applicants that were her, the people that she knew that she pushed forward to get citizenship. Yes, and, and like I told you, she lives in the Italian towers near um, on the way to the airport. Um, uh, citizenship, do you mean um, acquisition of a passport or citizenship, as in? in citizenship. In... Citizenship. Mm, okay. So the she... YouTuber, Wody Maya, just did a, um, a video on her last week. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find out her information from his video. If you like, you you know who Wody Maya is. He's a YouTuber yes. influencer. Yes. Yes. Just did yes. a video with her on last week. Yeah. So her office is behind the W D Du Bois um, Center, the museum. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, the Du Bois yeah. Museum. Yes. Her office is right behind it. It's a big, beautiful white office, mm -hmm. and and in the courtyard of her office. Um, she has it, the remembrance wall where you can you can buy for a hundred dollars you can put your family members' names on there, and Barack Obama when he visited put his name, she put his name she put um, Jesse Jackson had his name up there, so she's very influential for the diaspora, yes, I, but she's yes. also influential in Ghana government. Yes, she has I, the I, ear of the president. Yes, I, I understand you, but there are there are certain things not even the president can intervene. Let's say if you don't have a TIN number, there is no way that the, the states will say, no, I will dispense with the TIN number and this man ought to be given a bank account. It's, but it's, that's, not, that's not what I'm no, saying. No, I'm Richard. just writing an example. Yes. There, are, there, are, there are certain legal requirements that cannot be done away with. Mm -hmm. We're just saying, um, Richard, that it would not hurt if you were in communications with her so yes. that you can let her know the legal part of what we're doing. Yes. And so that if she feels like she can, you know, be an influence to us and help us along the way, the better yeah. for us. This is no slight saying that you sure. can, but this is just in, in conjunction with just to help things along to yes. when yes. we get to the smoothest process. That's it. Yes. Yes. So I would I would I would love if I could have his his her contact or anything that I can reach her on. Thank you. Okay. I'll send Bomami her um her phone number. Okay. okay, I have one more question, but it's for uh Brother Kobina. Um can you locate some some nurseries or growers because I'd like to have some trees planted on my plot as soon as possible. Since you cleared it, I'm in the first 15, I'm in the first 15 acres. So I'd like to have some trees planted as soon as you can find some um, nurseries that will go out there and plant, you know, around the boundary of my plot. Can you do that for us? Hello, did we lose him? Might be muted. Oh. I don't see him. Yeah, I don't either. Okay, well, uh, Bomani. I guess Corbina is uh, not on. Okay, so can you ask him the next time you talk to him? All right, uh, yes, uh, we're going to definitely get into this conversation. Let me see the gallery view, Corbina. 
and who will yeah it's um it's Chris who? probably finished and uh he can't get on so richard uh you can just uh answer the last set of questions uh we do have uh questions in reference to uh, uh building permit and also um property tax uh those are the next set of things after land registration and uh survey and um i think most of the questions that were posted on the uh the chat has been uh, answered. So Richard, if you can just uh, do, that, do that for us for the last few minutes and then we'll end this session and then we'll start a private session with only okay. um, where it says private. Okay, so um, I'm seeing um, questions about building permits. Now, um, building permits, um, you, would, you would not need to obtain building permits because Nana has spoken with the the local, the district assembly, and um, he's told them that they should dispense with um, asking you to come for building permits. Because um, according to Nana, he even had issues with the local assembly because it appears um, they, they have not been doing much for his community. So they lack that. Uh, moral rights to, 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 to come and be demanding for building permits. So as for building permits, it's not something you should worry about. Nana has already written to them and um, informed them that um, a community will, will be uh, springing up and then um, with building permits, uh, they, they should dispense with it. So uh, once your your uh, architect and the builders are ready. We can commence um, construction of your individual homes and then we are good to go. I got a question. Yeah. Um, my question would be also the other part of that question would be um, the property tax, if it does apply. And then there was another part of regarding a retirement visa. Is that, is that something that is offered from Ghana? Retirement visa. Um, and property tax also on the home. Yeah, prop, prop, property tax um, is usually um, is assessed on properties at the end of, um, it comes annually. Um, uh, property tax, I can assure you that it's not something that will even be um, for the whole year. It shouldn't, depending on the, the I, I, I don't see you building um, one person building, let's say, a 20-bedroom mansion. I, I don't do well. So um, property taxes, usually they are not that expensive. I don't see it going beyond, let's say, um, it will range between 70, 70 to $100 a year. That is maximum. That's maximum property tax um, a year. And um, it's, it's even... The, the location of, of the, 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 the property is also uh, factored into the commercial value of the property. Because if a property is situated um, in town, let's say um, around the plush areas or the, the, the prime areas, and the property rate that it attracts will not be the same as that of um, Jazzy, which is... Um, a sort of um, uh, countryside. It is not. Um, it's a new settlement. So that will will attract a mega um, assessment. So as for property tax, it is not anything that you 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 should be scared of. It's 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 um, it can even be less than fifty dollars for 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 a whole year. So it's 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 not anything that um, we, we cannot. Um, honor or we cannot um, readily afford. So property tax for now, we can, because even we don't know the nature of buildings that will spring up there. We are now um, at the discussion stage. Uh, we are now trying to figure out whether it will be a, a ramp earth um, building, a brakes, a container. We've even not settled on anything yet, but the property tax um, uh, it's, it wouldn't be anything scary. And Ghana, we don't have, we don't pay taxes on bare lands. So even if you decide to not to construct your building for, um, uh, for some time, 
you will not receive uh, property tax on the bare land line there. No, there must be a structure on it. And that's when they will do the assessment. But of course, I'm not advising that any one of you should leave his or her land bare. Once it is demarcated and assigned to you, take steps to develop it because um, I think that's the reason why we, we, we acquired the land too. So um, I would advise that uh, once it's your, you have your assignment, you have your land, um, we should um, endeavor to start developing it. Yes. How long, how long do we have to develop it? No, you don't, there's no time frame. I mean, that one, it's, it will be an arrangement by the, the group. Because if you can imagine if um, um, property A is being developed, property B and C is bare, property D, I mean, there will not be a uniform development. It will, the right. place will not have. So, I mean, it's, it's um, for aesthetic um, purposes, I think we should all try and, and, and develop our land. Yes, yeah, so that's, uh -huh. We can all have, we can be at the same, um, on the same page, we can develop it and then, you know, it's We can have neighbors. Yes, uh, alive, yeah. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, so were you able to answer the question regarding the retirement visa, if that is something that's available? Yes, retirement visa. Um, I have never heard, there is nothing like retirement visa. You want to come and settle in Ghana. Yes, so um, we, 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 we have registered a community. We are members of the community. You would have your, 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 your land, your land assigned to you in your name. Now, um, of course, you would you would um, get a visa to come to Ghana. Once you get in here, you have your land um, documents. You have acquired a property here. Who we'll use that to now um, start um, processing how your 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 stay here can be regularized? And that's where. Um, my sister was um, um, suggesting that, okay, um, there is someone who is fast tracking citizenship for our brothers and sisters out there. I mean, we would, I mean, I'll contact her, have a word with her, and then I'll look at what she's been doing. Or yeah, I, at the end of the day, we want, we want the best results. But um, once you get into the system and you have, your, yeah, um, you have acquired a property, Yes, we can use that to start processing your regularization here. And then we would we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. So. All right, family. Um, anyone else have any questions for Richard so we can let him go and then we'll just go into a short brief uh, private session and uh, do most of our presentation and things on the next uh, call. But this is being set for a public call because we wanna share with others um, the whole process of doing this thing legally and organized because we see a lot of terrible videos on uh, YouTube of confusion. So we're here to set the tone on doing things the organized in the right way in the legal way. And that's what Richard has been going over the last uh, two hours. So family, uh, if you wanted us, uh, have your last questions for Richard uh, so we can uh, let him go because he has to get up in the morning. It's too late there in Ghana and um, you know, out there uh, working, uh, uh, running his business. Yeah, Boma, eh? Boma, eh? Go yeah. ahead. I heard Richard talk, or as, as mentioned, uh, an original surveyor uh, and another surveyor. So there's two, two different types of surveyors. Yes. Okay. So, um, you know, um, the the land, the land is 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 um, a, a bush. It's a bushy area. It's it's uh, land that's uh, I don't know for the for for some time for a very long time, uh, no one has even gone there before. Now it will take a surveyor to go onto the land with 
uh, his um, gadgets, his equipment to um, demarcate, to take out the 50 or the 15 acre land. Now, when they take, then when they, they, they go onto the land, they have the gadgets they use to take the, the, the said land. Let's say if it is 15 acres or um, for now, we'll, we'll deal with the 15 acre land. So the surveyor will go onto the land. It's, it's um, a, a virgin forest or whatever. I mean, a land that uh, is, um, has trees and bushes and scraps on it, yes. So the surveyor will do that work, take the 15 acres. Now, sit down and draw a site plan. Site plan is essentially yeah, the layout of the land. And then put it on paper with the coordinates and then the description of the land, um, the, using GPS and all that. It's, it's a work. That, I mean, they know how to go about it. So once the, the, the surveyor finishes with the site plan, the surveyor being the the surveyor, the, the surveyor for that work, who went to pick the land will sign. Now, because at the end of the day, we want to register our land with the, the government, we have a government surveyor. The government surveyor will also co-sign or countersign on the, the site plan prepared by our surveyor to give, let's say, an endorsement because when we are registering, we will use that site plan to do the registration. And once we don't have the, the original surveyor's approval, signature, and his stamp, you, 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 you will be deemed not, your, your site plan will be deemed not to be valid. Because the, the original surveyor is there to authenticate whether or not the, the land that you, the surveyor, um, picked and um, drew a site plan for whether it does not fall. You know, governments uh, over the years have also acquired lands um, for other projects in future. So it is the, the work of the Soviet to make sure that it conforms with maybe the general layout of, of that place. Even though Nana owns the land, Nana cannot just um, decide that um, he's bringing um, 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 industries there to come because um, the Nana must also work within the government's um, arrangements. Nana cannot give the land out to someone to, let's say, do um, 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 set up a factory that will pollute the environment or something. The land belongs to him, but the, the, the original land surveyor is to make sure that the, the, the place that has been earmarked for, for us no, falls within settlement area. It doesn't fall within um, a place earmarked for um, industry by the states or something, or it will interfere with um, uh, maybe a water body or something. You see, so the regional surveyor is a rep of the a representative of the government who would look at our site plan. But even before the, 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 the surveyor does that, the, our surveyor will go and pick the land. He does that hand in hand with the, the regional surveyor. So at the, at the end of um, when he's done with his site plan and he signs that this site plan was prepared by our surveyor, the original surveyor will also sign on that document on the site plan on the land that had been um, earmarked for our, our settlement. We we'll also sign um, giving approval that yes, I have vetted the, the site plan and it is okay for the, the, the buyer or the, the lessee or whoever who acquired the land to proceed and do whatever he intends to do with the land. So that's the reason why we have the, the surveyor who will sign and the original surveyor who is a representative of the government will also give an endorsement. That's why we have that situation. So that there will be orderliness in the system. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm, I'm available. I'm, I'm, I'm available anytime for any question. I'm, I'm on the platform as well. The, our platform on WhatsApp.
So as and when you you want to ask uh, any question or you want any clarification or anything, I'm always at your beck and call. Just let me know. I'm 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 always available. Well, how do you spell Nana Haiti's name? Nana Nana is N A N A. Got that one. And, and Haiti is H E I T E Y. Thank you. T e, e Y. And he is the third. The third? Okay. Where did he go? All right, let me see. Uh, he said he, let me see, gallery view. All right, um, so he might have dropped off. I'm just trying to, uh, y'all don't see, y'all don't see Richard's name on there. No. All right, well, that's uh, literally uh, fine. I think we have asked him um, a whole lot of questions to where we should be clear on many things. So what we are going to have to do in a more private session is to continue next week on all the things that we wanted to work on and go through. Uh, so um, I'll resend the email and just uh, remove the top part and then we just continue as a second uh, session. But since Richard and Kwabna was available, I wanted to use more of the time for us to you know, conversate, talk with them get clarity of um, all of this information that may seem to be confusing to a lot of us, but it's one of those things where we have to understand the legal process of doing business in a country and we can't do the stupidity of what Garvey Town and other crazy people have done by trying to wing it or by trying to use traditional laws and everything. Uh, we're looking to meet up with serious investors as far as others uh, like ourselves uh, in the African diaspora and in order for us to really build this energy, we have to lay down a foundation that's very just righteous and upfront and just clear uh, because I look at different people out there trying to do things. I look at all the negative videos about Ghana getting land and people tend to just not look themselves in the mirror and take any level of accountability and things like that when, when things go wrong and it's it bad news on uh, online. So um, after the, the, the fall and the death of Garvey Town, uh, our goal is literally to just make sure that we do this the right way. And then don't listen to nobody's sweet talking and nice gesture and uh, all the stuff they got going. So, um, and another thing to add to that also is um, the fact that um, we have shown all of us that we can actually get this done by just having an organized flow of uh, energy. So. That's what uh, Richard and Kwabna uh, really just honestly just uh, dare to do. Um, you know, they're there just running around doing all the things that we agreed on and just appreciate that energy because we're showing people that this can be done and we need to take accountability if you want to get anything done. Like one of the things that I just want to share briefly and I'm not uh, speaking bad about anyone, um, you know, uh, we see, you know, I'm not sure if people see these things like uh, Omar Johnson is one of those people that I used to, you know, th that. I've listened to him for about a good 10 years and um, kind of watch other people out there that are doing things and kind of learn from what they're doing and kind of try to do things in a more way where we can kind of make it work because one of the things, as soon as you have certain flaws and you make certain mistakes, people are ready to tear you apart and things like that. And sometimes when those things happen, we all have to take accountability for our shortcomings and us not doing right. Like Garvey Town, um, it's hard for anyone to type in Garvey Town without seeing a connection to uh, their unfortunate, um, unorganized situation. It's just, it's written in the history and uh, that's what I do here as an administrative person. I put things in the history and the search engines so we can just put information out there to connect with the right people and to make sure that this work and those who cross us and, and try to you know, do, do certain things to us, we try to put things out there to educate people about making better decisions and organizing themselves. And in the case of um, Omar Johnson, I'm not going to do that to Garvey Town. Let's turn around and make a bunch of videos about them. But he has people making a bunch of videos of him uh, consistently. And I'm not here to just pick sides of anything. I'm just saying that we don't want to be that energy of just being, um, you know, 
doing certain things where people can look at our flaws. Like right now, we roll in strong as a strong, like you know, a strong military unit that's just you know propelling without uh, without people just being all in our business. Everything we do is pretty much private, and all of us are investors and things like that. And the donations that we ex we have accepted is very small over the years, and that has just mainly just been spent in Ghana because that's what we do with money. We try to make sure that we just keep the flow of resources that we have in the hands of black owned operation and everything that we've been doing for this business and even for other business that I have Africa for Africans in Ghana, it is represent that. So it's uh, important that we just be completely transparent with each other. Um, I did mention to everybody that we paid for the land. So it's like, I'm not just telling that we paid for the land. I provided all of the receipts that uh, we sent, um, all of the receipt that Nana Haiti sent us, but also I sent um, all of the, uh, the transactions for other things. And I have all of the, you know, naturally all of the transfers that I sent Nana Haiti, but since he sent me the receipt, it was just better to show you the receipt. But, uh, and then we show that we can pay for the land. So I've observed what Garvey Town have told me that they can't get people to do this, they can't get people to do this and that, and so is other groups of people, but we gotta uh, stop that as a people. I mean, it's an insult to us that make it seem like we're just incompetent. And I right. check those things, it's kind of just like, um, I'm from Jamaica. I don't speak with a strong Jamaican accent. I don't. I don't accept the stereotypes. You know, maybe the the, the, the ganja smoking stereotype. That's uh, that's fine with me. I don't take that personal. Um, but the other stereotypes, as far as we as a people, is this is this illiterate and it's, it's stupid. Uh, the best thing that we can do is honestly find. We live in a world full of black people on the continent and everywhere else. And my goal is only to deal with those of us that want to do this the right way and build this. So I don't ever communicate with anyone outside of what we're doing. Everything we need is private because we can't let people that don't have our best interest to infiltrate and just be on some other stuff to where they just more drama. You know what I mean? It's like, you should want to see us build Africa as a future of African people that will empower us across the entire planet and make Africa great again and not just be the talkers and things. You know, like one of the issues I've had is just, all these people that's raising black fists, talking about black power, black this, uh, since I started studying um, you know, in the last uh, 16 years. And you know, it's, it's like, we have to go beyond the studying and being sharp and smart and being prolific speakers. And that's what I also use in the es essence of Umar Johnson. So it's like, if we're gonna speak big, we gotta deliver big, if we, you know, and things like that. So everything that we just did uh, is set on the recording where I, my goal is literally just to honestly this, uh, share it with um, the rest of the people that I have. I have a list of 200 people that want to join us. And I felt like a lot of people didn't make a commitment because of all of the shenanigans and stupidity that has happened. Uh, you know, from whether I was working with Fianca or Garvey Town, I said I've even people send me emails. Uh, like one person sent me emails insults to Ima because blaming her. Well, she, she didn't do anything. She was just like me. She's there trying to help that project. And unfortunately, some of us, our names have been attached to unfortunate situations like myself, but I tell people, the only thing I've honestly did was to organize our people to bring them in front of presentations and uh, try to just work with the people that were presenting land opportunities. And that's why I even more so step in my game up to show everyone that we're honest about what we're doing because it's, it is, it's just one or two incidents happen and next you know people like in essence of Omar Johnson, I, I think I count like 10 different people that make YouTube videos specifically about him and discredit him and I'm not taking up for him or I'm not against him. I'm just saying we all have to take accountability for everything, uh, including, uh, you know. So um, I just want us to just do the right thing and just get it done right because it's a shame that we as a people have been in the diaspora where Kwame Nkrumah and a whole lot of other people and then you have chiefs that's offered us hundreds of acres of land and thousands of acres of land. And now you ask yourself, where's the community represent the African diaspora that's returning? And also, you know, us returning is not us just trying to be separate. Us returning is helping the common ones of us that are honestly, you know, maybe have like $5,000 that they could work with or even $1,000. I've talked to people that say, yo, I'm on my last few thousand dollars and I'm making this move to Africa. And it's like, you know, I'm gonna just chance it because I just don't wanna be anymore. And you know, I, I give them our best advice. And that's why I tell people when any video I do, uh, I don't need you to pay me a consultation charge, call me, talk to me. Uh, I've been going to Africa uh, for the last, um, you know, since 2004 and I've just been uh, organizing data so where I can help the rest of us and us work on things organically. So my goal is to get more and more of those people to use some of their money as 
you know, the investment to get the land and also to help them connect in a community where we can share more of everything. And just like we shared all the costs that, it, uh, has to, that Richard has to get paid and everyone else that we have to deal with. And individually, it was just, you know, it would break most of us, uh, uh, including myself, uh, because, you know, all of us, uh, as much money as everyone think we make in America, you got ridiculous expenses and you got people like these crooked people in my county jacking up the water bill, jacking up the, the gas bill and all kind of this unfair craziness. So even that's a situation where we're going to have a good presentation next week to where we can talk about all of our sustainable options and things like that. So it's just me just organizing this to where we're, we can talk about everything for this a whole one year period of our connections and uh, just going over everything and build a foundation of this could happen. So my goal is to share this call with the others uh, that are just been watching just like I share the receipts uh, uh, with them, uh, the, AKA the financial report and let them know that uh, we have everything set to where um, we've organized you know, myself, Richard, Kwabina and Nana, you know, we consider ourselves men of honor that want to represent our people and do everything for our own brothers and sisters to make it work. And we're also here to protect us and, from the rest of the vultures that are our own people that look just like us, that are wolf in sheep clothing. And, you know, and those are people like Garvey Town, Fianca and other people who literally don't want to do the work. So I'm committed and I just want to raise the level of us doing certain things so I can raise the level of get more people involved in doing the different things that has to be done, especially in a committee uh, phrase to where we can build what we need to build and make it work. So that's what you have seen. Uh, one year of our accomplishments where people say that we can't do this, uh, this uh, nobody wants to do anything with us and things like that. We're proving them all wrong and we're going to prove the rest of the people all wrong that we can do this as a people. And by us doing that, that's where we're going to get more and more support. Because I really believe deep in my heart, there's a lot of other black people that are watching us and they are scared to death to do anything uh, with us because of what other people have done that speak the same way or similar uh, and things like that. So I always want to differentiate myself between myself and all these other people. Uh, so I kind of just operate in a, not in an isolated mode, but in a, a private specific mission mode. And that's why on the, the overview, you have things like uh, we don't allow certain people in um, our, our community. And it's just pretty much it's for straight uh, Pan-African family, people who believe in the straight African nation building and us supporting black owned enterprise and us being our best and doing things at the highest level with no reasons or excuses and just getting it done. Uh, and, it's, and the only thing that I will say about that is we as a people could have get a, gotten a lot of things done in Africa, but we tend to focus too much on America. We build everything, all our struggles, our fight for America. And as someone that's born in Jamaica and, uh, and is, uh, from being from the outside coming in, I'm just, just here to connect with my brothers and sisters, just like my other uh, African national brothers and sisters and other black people from different parts of, of the diaspora and say, hey, let's use some of the best resources that we as a black people have, which is in America and organize even a 1% to 5% energy because we know most of these zombies are going to stay brainwashed and they're going to go down with the ship and they're going to keep on fighting for Biden or, uh, or Trump or whatever other people that they throw at them and everything. But uh, we as a people, if we invest more in investing on the African continent, we can make Africa uh, great again. As a matter of fact, I'm about to redesign Trump Magna Hat with red, black, green, and gold and put make Africa great again and push an energy uh, you know, and things like that. So it's like these people want to, pay to play their psychological games. I'm with it, you know, where they got people running from the democratic devil plantation system to the Republican Democratic uh, Republican uh, devil plantation system. And then, you know, you have all these black people fighting each other about that my slave master is better than your slave master. And my slave ma master did this and my slave master did this. And it becomes a level of stupidity like that. So we're the force that's really just doing something uniquely just different and say, hey, uh, you know, let's make this happen. And uh, from when I started studying uh, in 2003 to where we just started organizing study groups and connecting with other people, these are the things that I was sharing with my brothers and sisters. Like, let's not just continue the, the legacy of just us wasting resources and not living up to our highest potential of corporate economics. And let's literally put the work in and do it. So that's been my quest on us traveling to the African continent, trying to see different countries, because Ghana is the sixth country I went to. You know, and Tanzania is going to be the 10th country. Uh, and those two countries represent what we're looking to build. So it took a little time as far as getting around and things like that. So um, that's what I honestly just want to share with everyone, uh, family. So what I want to do is just open up some general questions. And remember, family, I was keeping this in a situation of 
it being a public recording so I can share on YouTube. So if you don't want to show your face, just turn off your uh, video. If you want to change your name or do anything, that's fine. I don't want uh, you know you to feel like we put you out there. Uh, so um, unmute yourself and just ask your questions or anything that you want to reason with, and we'll close and uh, get those emails out for us to continue the other part of our conference call since we went over because Richard was dropping incredible knowledge. And I saw a message, uh, you're gonna have a community in Tanzania. We're gonna have a lot of things in Tanzania, but it's like, you don't wanna run your mouth and start talking big like some people. And then when things don't work out, then you know, people turn against you. So let's be real with ourselves and build what we need to build in Ghana. Uh, me going to Tanzania and also going back to the Gambia, it's going there to do field research and kind of just, you know, just, uh, you know do what I, I call just underground research and process things. and. Uh, yes, I know that we have folks in the desk that's there doing certain things, and I appreciate the energy, and I like what they're doing, and things like that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm looking to connect with any of them, and I'm not trying to just be rude or disrespectful or mean or anything. I'm just saying that based on everything that we have talked about, you see how we move in a, you know what I'm saying, we move in a different kind of unit from, you know, and not trying to separate ourselves. It's just that we have to, some of us have to operate on the highest level of just professionalism and organization and things like that, and it's not like we just saying that we're better than any other group of people. I just basically want people to step their game up before we do every, uh, sorry, before we do anything. Because after the fall of Garvey Town, Garvey Town is dead 16 years of failure. Um, you know, and all the lessons that we have learned and still trying to get back so much of our money as far as um, you know, a refund that we're supposed to get back, uh, which I've literally just credited everyone from my end, which is people say it's unfair. It's just, it's unfair to me, but that's never the, Point. The, the point is, I have to also be accountable. I have to be accountable for the situation, which I literally showed my accountability by getting Richard and Quabin and us working a new land deal, also, and making sure everybody got credit that whoever needed a refund get refund. Uh, but uh, literally, just want uh, folks to know that um, I'm, you know I'm, I'm done giving any of our people the benefit of the doubt anymore. It's like, don't come with me all the talking and the presentation. Come with me and show me your documentation. Be about your business, and then we can talk and work together. I'm here, you know, our space is here for video calls and meeting people and things like that. And if they can't live up to those things, then we're just done with them. It's just because you have to have a whole lot to lose for us to do things with you. And that was my issue with Garvey Town. Those losers had nothing to lose because they were already just behind on everything, and they've already didn't plan it out. Uh, and they, them and other people look at us from the diaspora as their victims or people that they say, hey, you know, what? let's get them to just do all the things that we need uh, them to do and build our, com uh, build our community based on our dictatorships and rules and laws and everything. And let's not give them legal paperwork so we can kind of have, have control of them and their property. That is wickedness. You know, so that's why you see hashtag Garvey Town is dead because if you're gonna represent our people and use uh, Honorable Marcus uh, Garvey name and represent that you're going to build a community and things like that. You better step your game up. And if you, you know, if you're going to do something and we're not involved in that's that's kind of your business. But if you're going to take our money and not represent us, you're going to have drama. So uh, I apologize to anyone if I sound childish by doing the stuff I'm doing. I'm not specifically making videos of them, but I'm also interjecting information in the videos that we do to literally educate all of us on what we're supposed to do when we do land investment or we decide to commit to certain groups. So Richard, the legal person in Ghana literally just explained that whole process the last two hours. And Kwabna also explained that process. So I advise anyone out there that's watching this uh, video, if people are not willing to lay it out for you and, and show the documentation and everything, don't trust them, don't do business with them, don't waste your time because you do have a whole lot of wolf in sheep clothing out there. And they make people like myself and those of us that's ready for the revolution look bad. And I'm just sick and tired of our people getting in the way of our progress. And that's why I'm only doing business with those of us that are ready. So when any of those other groups in any of those countries uh, step their game up, I can do business with them because sometimes I look at people's website and what they're doing and it's just a flow of this unprofessionalism on organizations. And then I look at, this is why we don't own much of anything in America because uh, we don't want to bring our A game and we just want to just wing it. Uh, Cause I mean, I can't uh, tell you the amount of phone calls I get here at my office about you know, since I told people that I'm available and I, they, people call me and I just basically do one of those things where I just ask everybody to be honest with me and just tell me everything and then I can just be honest with them also and things like that. And at the end of the day, is most of our folks don't have it organized or anything. So I'm hoping that we can just use this energy to really build 
a strength of us just taking it to that level to where other people say, hey, you know what, let's reach out to these brothers and sisters and let's also or follow their foundation of lead of organizations. Uh, because my goal now is to, to set the bar so high up, it, it's either, you know, like they say, you know, either you, you, you swim or sink, to set up to where folks have to swim by either just stepping the game up and doing the right thing and building us up or this uh, sink by being the, the failures that the, 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 the failures that they are and trying to convince us that there's something else. So um, I'm putting this out there to my brothers and sisters. Make sure you check all of these people out that claim that they're building communities and they're doing this and they're doing that. And I'm not here to point anybody out or say anything bad about anyone other than the, the, the criminals, Garvey Town, and, uh, and then you know the unorganization of Fianca uh, and things like that. I don't have certain things personal to Fianca because they didn't take any of our money as far as our, our group but they did mislead and confuse a lot of people that could have been potential repatriates that could have built incredible operation. And one of the things that we have to look at, and also family, if anyone is just burned out by this and has to move on, I'm fine with it, I do understand, but after this, go through certain things for a recorded call. Uh, so, you know, you know, so one of the, the reasons why we just have to just honestly go through this is this over and over again, family, is because this may be our last stand to do this, right? And right now we have a momentum of energy of people that are coming through. So let's just uh, make it happen. So I just wanna uh, know if anybody have any questions about anything I've talked about, Richard have talked about, or Kwabna has talked about, and then I'll just close by uh, just, um, you, know, you know, I'll just close after that. I have a question. When should we send in our $1,100? Uh, you can send it out once we get documentation of, uh, from the Lands Commission as far as the invoice and those things. Uh, I don't want to start collecting money from everyone. I just, back to what I was talking about, I want to be complete, real, and transparent by creating those things in documented forms and get the uh, money, get the, uh, the, the estimate uh, from uh, the surveyor. So Richard is going to be working on those things. Uh, that way we can just have it documented. And uh, everything that we're doing, everyone is legally bound. So uh, any one of us, um, if all of us is aware that we have to play nice and play fair and be honest because like if, if probably give me a price or somebody give me a price, I'm not just going to accept anything. I'm going to call a bunch of people in Ghana and get prices and things like that and things like that. So, you know, we kind of keep ourselves accountable as much as possible. Just like when I send you any invoice or any information, check it out and let me know uh, everything looks good and ask questions. Make sure that uh, every, you know, we, I want to make sure that we all get our money's worth out of everything as a people. And because people have literally look at us, uh, most of us are, whether we're born in America or not, we all live in America. So America is considered a country with, it's a full of rich black people. And, and I'm like, you know, you tell other people that, you know, it's not like that. I mean, you may be misrepresented by, you seeing certain videos or certain things that's going on. But, you know, those of us are coming as hardworking people that, you know, uh, we work hard for our money and we want to get the most of our money. You know, we want to do business at, on the highest level, but we don't want to just be milked. All right, family, I'm still available for a few questions before we close. In the next uh, 10 minutes, which we make a call, a three hour call. I have a question. I, I put it in the chat, but I wanted to know if if we had any like insurance to secure our money and and for you as well, so that you don't have to, you know, use your money to pay back people. I mean, is there any insurance that we can a attach to this effort? Uh, the best thing that we can do is just to, to do everything via the uh, legal process and get a attorneys, get court stamps and everything and have our ownership of the land. And also, um, we know who the chief is. We have, uh, you know, we have all of this information. We have connected him. We've done everything in that situation. So we're protected ourselves to the highest level. The only thing is as individuals who have paid their money, uh, you have to follow through and actually build on your land. And then if those who just want a refund back or something, it's one of those things where it's uh, available. You know, we just have to give us time for us to resell your property and then we'll just you know, cash out with you minus uh, non-refundables and things like that. Uh, so um, a situation that happened with Garvey Town, yeah, I don't, I don't want anybody to feel uh, sorry for me. It's what it is. And I um, worked it out and made it up on just business uh, profits and things like that because 
everything that I do is business enterprise and um, I get up every day to run this operation as a business enterprise and it's a profitable operation and you do have certain situations where whatever you end up losing, you end up uh, working it out in uh, investments and property. It's completely confusing to explain, uh, but uh, when you create your own business systems, you have to put things in place that's gonna keep you uh, going, just like you know, you're creating tr tours and things like that, and you're letting people know that certain portions are not refundable based on the fact that you have expenses that you're covering and, then, and things like that. Uh, so um, anyone knows anything about any kind of insurance, um, you know, you can always present that and everything, but uh, what we do in these things is to create a um, refund cancellation policy and things like that, and then put everything legally to where if, you know what I'm saying, like if none of this decide to just uh, jump in a rocket ship and take off to the moon and things like that, we'll be able to still access our land and make it work, even if we may have to just go through some court issues and things like that. Uh, so, um, and even when we were uh, brainstorming after we uh, fired Garvey Town, uh, we just kind of talked a lot about different things and just took a, made a list of everyone's concern and kind of put it into where we can build the best guarantee as possible. So right now we have people there in Ghana um, that are moving there and getting things set up. And uh, with that and the legal work, we're going to be looking over land, building what we need to build. And I mean, it's as a guarantee as we can get. We paid for it and we have everything that we need. So um, anyone else that have anything to share about what we can do, I'm fine with it or explain any kind of other insurance, but uh, um, me and the uh, crew of us that's getting paid to do our job, we are the insurance. Uh, hi, Bomani, this is Terrence. Um, I had got cut off for a little while. Um, you said something about be ready to build. Um, is this something changed with the timeline as far as building? Uh, no, it doesn't uh, change. Uh, um, it's uh, three to five years. So we're looking at completing uh, phase one and phase two in five years. If everybody can have a um, the house built by the fifth year, uh, so it'd be in, in 2015, uh, 2025, um, you know, five years from now or four, three to five years from now. So just work towards doing that. And for those who literally just won't be able to do that, uh, it's a simple goal that we've talked about someone else will take your land and then you'll get swapped over to a later phase, phase three, four, five, however long we keep building. And that way you don't lose your money because part of, that's all I mentioned that we're, we are the insurance. Part of what happens is things change in people's lives and things like that. And that's why there's also a refund policy. And someone may be put off to building in the community and they may need an option to leave from phase one to go to phase two and so on. So um, all of those things have been plotted out. Um, that I, you know, I mentioned I talk a lot with Kravina, um, uh, Richard, and things like that. And as you've seen the email I sent with the cost, I've, they have gotten a lot of money to do the work and things like that because we need to just have the best people on our side and have everything organized. Oh, okay, cool. All right, excellent. All right, family says a few more minutes. Um, any last uh, minute questions? Um, I don't have a question, but I want to thank you for um, having them on the call because I think it, it will definitely provide it um, a lot more clarity for me as well as um, it's extremely informative. So um, hopefully that won't be our last session with them, but it was extremely informative. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. As we be, as we begin to this pro um, progress, uh, it's one of those things where um, you just want to build that foundation. But um, you know, when you get to Ghana, you you know you're gonna meet Richard and uh, Nana and also our Kwabena, and then we'll do as much as possible virtually. And then also when we travel to Ghana in December on a tour for those who are coming with us, uh, we'll be able to do the same presentation that we do did uh, last year December, except it will be a lot shorter with actually meeting the chief and the elders. Mm -hmm. And we'll see other presentation with the orphanage that, you know, will adopt into our commitment to be a part of uh, nature uh -huh. world. And, and then, uh, you know, we'll have other people that we'll meet that are part of the community that's like, uh, are you guys coming to bring jobs? Uh, I, want to, I want to work with you guys doing this, that, and things like that. Uh, so that's also what Pablo was talking about. I, I think it was um, good to, to be able to have a conversation with them also, even 
you know, when I asked them about the, uh, like Dr. Bennett issue, to, to challenge them to, to consider something like that and not to just isolate, you know, opportunities that we can have with this um, diaspora, Dr. Bennett thing, but to consider, you know, working with her just to see what, what he can get out of it that will be to our benefit. Um, I don't think that he seemingly was not open to that initially, but I didn't want him to think that I was slighting his ability. I just wanted him to consider, you know, also tracking that route just to see if it's, it can be something that's beneficial to us. So I was glad that he was open to getting her contact information. Uh, yes, absolutely. And um, uh, what, what I've spoken with Richard is uh, we're going to build a new entity energy of how we can get citizenship. And again, I'm not looking to this, to, you know, put anyone else down and things like that. I just don't agree with some of the ways some of our people have gone about reaching out mm -hmm. to some of us and getting them citizenship and things like that. I don't like Rick's situation. And ever since the, the death of Garvey Town, I've, you know, realized that we can't operate like that because uh, it's just it it slow us down. So those who was able to do whatever, that's fine with them, but we're going to build ourselves as a legal entity there in Ghana, building bridges, connections, being a part of development and being a part of investing in the future of us as a people uh, there in Ghana and not there just as someone who gets citizenship and then they're there in Ghana, uh, lollygagging or just, uh, just you know, basically just enjoying their American life in Ghana uh, and things like that and just got a citizenship because they paid somebody this amount of money and things like that and, and, and so on. You know, as a matter of fact, I got a call from someone recently that was explaining what uh, people are doing. And I was like, you know, if, if that's what they want to do and, that's, and they feel like that's helping, that's fine. Uh, but, um, you know, I don't, I can't get in a situation where we deal with people when we call them about citizenship. They're like, send this amount of money and this and that. And I'm like, yo, I, I haven't even asked you any questions or get clarity of what the process is and everything. And you already asked me for a bunch of money. So anything, once again, family, where people just donate this, send me this, give me this, and, and pay me this, and you know, just, it's a red flag of just them being this, uh, this want and not willing to do certain work. Uh, so that's why I've just disconnected our energy from a lot of other people and want to create a new, fresh energy of how we go about, go about doing this thing in a more respectable manner and more professional and legally connected to where we're not just... You know, I understand we all feel like we deserve automatic citizenship, and I'm with you. I think it's the right thing to do in the best. No, I don't think that. But, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, and I apologize. Uh, let me not, not generalize. I know most of us uh, uh, feel like we deserve automatic African citizenship because we're still in it. Yes, and I feel it, and I understand where we're coming from. Uh, at the same time, too, we have to also look at the situation of uh, colonized African continent and countries like Ghana and having to try to recreate a process. So all of us are part of a recreating process of how we can build uh, and make Africa great again and build that future that we need to build. Uh, but, th and that's why I'm talking about the process of what we're going through, because that process basically make all of us just dedicated investors in uh, the continent and in a country like Ghana. And we're able to mobilize our energy to where we can be an effective part of the growth and development of the continent and not be a uh, liability because I'm not going to lie to you. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that I've known since I started going to Ghana and it's been, they've wrecked their life. Some have come back homeless, homeless shelter. Some have come back completely broke and some have come back where their whole family is divided and things like that. And so it's like, let's try to create process. And this is for me just being an independent. Uh, after I dropped out of university, I just started grabbing the books that I paid all this money for and educated myself. Uh, on business management and business development and things like that because you know you get to the point where you feel like you're not uh, learning anything and people just trying to you know the education system is hustling you so i spent the last 15 years here just studying a whole lot of stuff you come here you see a library full of books and documentation and videos uh, that way we can just do things the right way and yes people may joke about me say you've been going to ghana for a long time you don't have a house here yeah and, you know I, and, and, and I, you know and i accept i listen to all the insults and i don't take it personal but it's like, I tell them like, yo, at the age of me going to Ghana, I was just starting my independent career and I just started building what we we're building and it made more sense to stay here. And especially if you have a child, you don't want to just 
drag yourself and your child to Africa and then you don't have things worked out. Like right now we have things worked out to where we're gonna build our own school system set up for our entire town itself, for the children that's at the orphanage, ourselves and other people. So, and then have other Ghanaian professionals and other people be a part of our education system so we can all educate and develop each other and things like that. And then back to the citizenship process, we're looking to organize things as we are showing our government in Ghana that we have dedicated ourselves to a, a few years of process of building something that's viable to Ghana and, and things like that. And, and so we'll work out how we can get our citizenship because we're, we're, we're gonna be landowners, business owners. We're gonna have our own accounts and things like that. We're gonna be doing all of the things that it, it qualifies you to get citizenship and things like that. Some people are getting citizenship and they live here in America and they're not there in Ghana and things like that. And I don't know how they're working it out. Honestly, I'm not jealous or hating on anyone. Uh, and, you know, and things like that. I feel like I've done a lot of work as far as marketing Ghana and tourism and things like that. And, you know, and, but um, we're gonna work what we need to work to get uh, myself and, um, and the rest of us citizenship. And uh, we're just gonna do it that process and those who do it the other way, that's fine. Um, you know, cause together I'm hoping that it's all the end, it's all the same in the end that we have dedicated people uh, from the African diaspora that are citizens and citizens that are committed to the future of building Africa. And now people are citizens just to, to leave America and come to Ghana and just uh, feel like, uh, uh, you know, they should just chill. Um, it's the biggest uh, mistake of what we do, you know, what we could do as a people. So um, again, our energy is looking to represent a certain flow of how we can do this and also do it more communally, more on a cooperative economics and build stronger strength. Uh, because sometimes if you're not a strong entity, it's hard to be at the sitting table. So we'd have built what we need to build. And then we'd have gotten different uh, attorneys and consultants to be a part of our staff or our crew that represent us to, you know, even get things like basic, um, you know, uh, work permits or different things that we may find challenging when we go there individually. And then we reach out to an entity that's supposed to be able to help us with our repatriation. And then you find out that they're completely unorganized, don't know what they're doing, and they're asking you for money without even giving you clarity of what they can do for you. So those are the things that I don't want to be associated with family. I feel like it's an insult that people think all of us are unorganized, unprofessional, and things like that. And so our energy is going to represent leadership. And, uh, you know, and that's one of the things I learned when I was in the U.S. Navy. I saw the, the organized, professional um, military operation that executed all the things that they need to execute based on attention to detail and based on this organ not organizing, just organized, organizing and uh, mobilizing and being strategic and tactical on every approach on what needs to be done to where you can get the best of uh, your mission. And that's what I wanted us to do with this. So um, once I'm finished uh, completely with these uh, presentations, I want us to just try to get uh, certain information out to more people so we can work on uh, paying off our 50 acres of land because uh, it's, uh, well, it's a one-year deal. And uh, with that, we just go straight to building and I'm hoping everything will be set next year where we just really just doing a fast pace of developing the community to where people can see that this can be done. And um, I, I said enough, uh, family, so let me stop and let's get some last minute questions. I have a question. Uh, are we clear on, on um, a little bit? Remember when Richard said that the directors as it stands would be Nana and Kovina for our, for our community. That's the legal you know, that's how it is legally. Are we clear what it will take for us to get our own directors? I mean, does it mean that everybody who's a board member has to officially be, have relocated to Ghana or exactly what is the threshold for being able to get our own directors? Uh, yes, it's, it's an immediate uh, changeover. Um, I've done uh, something, like, something like that similar on another investment project that we had uh, uh, several years ago. And um, it's a great strategy because um, it, 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 it put less stress on us to come up with ridicu rid, uh, ridiculous money that uh, we can use for development. Uh, so it'll be immediately uh, once we close out on all of this legal process. And, uh, and yes, we don't have to be there uh, directly, but uh, one or two of us are gonna be there. So they'll be a part of going to, um, you know, going with Richard and Kwabana uh, to the location and then we'll create all the legal documents that we need to create to get a changeover. 
So it's something that uh, will be done um, immediately. So immediately means we're looking at the beginning of next year to have a lot of these things clear. As you can see, there's a whole lot of moving around and things going. And um, our goal is just to have it all set and organized, especially once I go to Ghana in December with our group and come back because that's when we're going to have certain uh, meetings and certain communications to, for those things to happen. And, and unfortunately, I can't stay in Ghana longer than the time I've set. Uh, but uh, we should be able to even do it um, after that or before that. So I'll definitely okay. keep everyone posted. But it's not a situation where we plan to just have it drawn out. Does that have to be done before we start getting our uh, site plans and our pillars, you know, pillars up? I'm um, just no, um, because everything is set in the, the legal name as a business name for us as, a, uh, us as a, a group and all of our names have been submitted. Like everyone legal name has been submitted, uh, which is connected to Africa for Africans. Sorry, excuse me, Black Star uh, Pan-African Community, a uh, separate uh, entity to where plots one to 50 will be numbered in the system and we'll be able to do what we need to do. And as far as who's the director and things like that uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the account, uh, that will be just something that wouldn't get in the way of what we're doing. And that's what we're doing. We're creating a setup to where none of these things are going to get into the way of us uh, progressing on what we need to do. They just basically set to where it cuts, you know, uh, we're trying to, uh, it cuts uh, unnecessary process out the way and things like that. And I'm trying to see if I uh, answered your other question. You did. You answered it. I was just trying to determine whether or not, because, you know, we got to get that, that uh, 10 or TIN, and I'm just trying to be clear on what are the prerequisites for us to get to that point because I understand that as uh, that's something like your social security number, your tax identification number here, where you just can't move anywhere, anyway, without that number. Uh, yes, and, um, and Ghana is um, uh, organizing as much process as there are. A lot of things have legally changed uh, in the country uh, since I've been there. And, uh, so. I appreciate Richard with updating us on that one. And that is our direct goal is to make sure all of us have that number to where all of us can, because all of us need bank accounts because you're gonna have to figure a way how to pay, um, you, know, you know, pay the builders and things like that. And we don't want to get ourselves administratively too involved in, in, in too much unnecessary accounts of, of uh, collected money. So um, the best thing that we could do is just get everybody's, uh, everyone account and also as far as the Black Star Line Cooperative Community um, Credit Union, which is a separate entity from us, that's another option that we just gotta, I just gotta meet with them and talk with them. And also we have our, our sister Renee, she's there, she's gonna connect with them and see what other options that they can create to assist us to set something up with them also so everyone can get access to accounts there in Ghana. That way they can move your money around and also you know, pay certain things that you need to pay. And those, and once we get our T, our T and our T I N, then we can start operating as businesses in Ghana without the two hundred thousand dollars that they. Uh, well, wanted. the corporation that we set up, uh, Black Star uh, Pan African Community, which is this, a corporate enterprise, we are officially business owners. We have a business registered, and we're going to operate under that business entity, which has, which has all of our names attached to it. Uh, so. It's kind of like you just come up with different ways, and then I'm not talking about the shortcomings that are cutting the system, like uh, or some of our garbage town. But as far as just coming up with tactics to, because some some of the process is unnecessary there, and it just delay us. So us being a group and just being an enterprising group, it gives us a lot of flexibility to get a lot of things done. As far as billing, you know, like I mentioned. Uh, Richard and other people be able to just get us so many different things because we're attached to. Uh, this corporation and attached to a registered entity and landowners. Uh, so it's just, it's just never been explained uh, that way because I've never heard people have these processes, but it's something that literally uh, <laughs> planned out over the last, you know, over several years and just figured that, you know, what, um, strength in, in numbers is the best uh, approach because uh, we'll just, you know, the money that will come there will just get sucked and sucked and sucked away. And that's one of the biggest stories you're going to hear from people. That I just came with a bunch of money and it just disappeared, like magic or something. Thank you. All right, uh, appreciate it. Uh, and family, I know uh, we're dropping off one by one, uh, but trying to stay on to this, finish this part of what we have is just a public uh, communication.
to update uh, everyone on our one year process of us doing everything the legal way and being able to set up an incredible enterprise and showing that it could be done within one year and not 16 years of failure, uh, like other, uh, and, or the many different years other people have just played games and things like that, so. And perfect, and someone is talking about the orphanage. Uh, yes, in order for us to build a true connection, um, we have to integrate ourselves back into you know, the African society. And part of that is, um, you know, the education setup that we have there, you know, we'll be able to learn you know, a few different uh, Ghanaian language and including, you know, things that we may need to use for the other country that we're looking to deal with, uh, uh, Tanzania, Swahili, because our goal is to build you know, an incredible operation, you know, in other countries and being able to, you know, communicate and do, do business, um, and a lot of trades and business with each other as a people itself and represent us do more business focus on each other because the different African countries, their partners for business are, if you look at the top 10 partners for all different African countries that are doing uh, business and import, export, things like that, it's like usually uh, a few different European countries. And the same thing with the uh, Caribbean island and the same thing with uh, South America. So uh, we're having a disconnect as a people to where we're not building enough hubs of connection to where we begin to just use more of our human and business resources to build what we need to build. Uh, because we're gonna have to do that in a higher level because the Chinese, the Indians, they're already in, in the gates, uh, you know, the invaders are already inside the gates of Africa. And in order for us to, to really do what we need to do, we have to build ourselves and do more business with each other and dominate because there's no reason why we should have a whole group of all these other foreigners that's taken up Africa and begin to now suck the life in Africa. And since the Indians and um, the Chinese were literally uh, colonized and dominated by the, you know, example like the British, uh, so-called empire, and they were put in charge of us in countries like uh, in Jamaica, uh, South Africa, and you know, you just name the countries. So after so-called this uh, independence and things like that, and the uh, oppressors are left, these became the new oppressors. Like I, yeah, like I was living in South Africa in Cape Town and they run the place. And in the other parts of Africa, the same situation. So we have uh, you know, and, and they're just, so that's what I'm talking about as far as us just being able to, to, to mobilize on what we need to do for the next 10 years and really build with each other strong and out compete these other people. Because if we out dominate them in business and investment and we pu push more for this, us doing business with each other, we'll drive out the invaders and send them back to where they come from because you're basically sucking their life force, which is just us being consumers. Um, there's no reason why we shouldn't have factories all over the African continent that's doing business with each other and cutting the route from us buying all these unnecessary goods uh, from different Asian countries and different people that literally just want to sell us uh, this, you know, you know they, they send the worst of the stuff to Africa and the worst of the stuff to black countries. And that's how we're just even being played. And any manufacturing aspect that anyone has set up in the world, we can have access to that by putting our money together. People can build shoe factories in China whatever, we can build the same in Africa. And, you know, begin to build more of the Made in Africa brand. And like I'm saying, I have a lot of people that I'll, I'll, I'm open to working with and open for us to work with, but they have not stepped their game up on a level where I would even waste my time even talking with them anymore. Because ever since the fall of Garvey Town, it has let us know that we have to step our game up because we can't keep affiliating ourselves with the weak links of our society that refuse to do right and refuse to commit the straight hardcore pan-Africanism and work and being honest. So I'm preaching to the choir and I'm beating this thing over, but that's the reality of what we're looking to do. And this one of the latest, this call down as a foundation of where we're moving forward to. And anyone else that's listening, willing to work and build it to that high level, please connect and reach out to us. And if you're not about your business, you're gonna get embarrassed and we're gonna put videos and information out on you to keep away from you. So don't waste your time, it's not worth it. Uh, right now, as again, I said, I've basically put a stamp on these, uh, these people, Garvey Town, um, and put a stamp on them. That way, this thing don't happen again where we waste our resources and things like that with fools who don't have, who are not willing to do the work we're doing and come up with reasons and excuses consistently. You know, that stuff is dead and it's played out. You know what I mean? Either you, you know, either, you know, you swim or you sink, either you step your game up or you drop off and things like that. So, um, you know, so I apologize to anyone if they think that some of the stuff I do is childish because they even got videos of people that are fired from my tour and say, these are lazy, worthless bums. And these are real stories because I refuse to let 
us you know, when it's time for us to do things for, for white people or, or slave masters, we show up at their work, their property. And I'm, and I'm one of those people that have done that. I show up sharp and tight, sharp in my military suit, in my airlines uniform or whatever it is, and been dedicated, you know, you know like, yes, master, and, and, and make my money. And now that we're on a different level, it's like, okay, I gave these, these people a certain level of commitment. Now I'm building something or we're building something for us. Let's give it the greatest level of our commitment. So when people tell me that, oh, I, have, uh, I work five hours a week and I only have two days off and so on, and I can't join this committee, or I can't get on the call and I can't do this. And it's like, um, if that's your mindset, we're not gonna be able to do much together in the future and your projects are gonna be delayed because there's no, because the people who are committing themselves, it's not fair to them that they commit themselves. And some of us, I know our lives are busy, but give one or two efforts of energy uh, it doesn't take much to answer emails or a text message or communicate with a group or check out some of the calls or documentation that we have. Uh, so I'm not trying to talk down to any of us. I'm just trying to say that we have to step our game up if we're willing to make this work on a higher level. And those who are tied up in certain things, I definitely understand, let's work towards giving a little bit more and more. And eventually, with the best thing I have to um, recommend to all of us is to keep away from the negative energy of other people who just don't get what we look in the bill and keep what we're doing private that way other people don't have to sit around and try to criticize what we're doing so uh, this is a public call we have set up and I dare anyone to say what they want to say about what we're doing because um, you know it's not perfect but my question to these uh, people who jealous weak uh, spineless uh, folks of ours what are you building to change the dynamics of our people. And if you have an issue with what we're doing in Africa, what are you doing in America? Because, you know, you, you know, because people have fought me about us doing things in Africa. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, well, you want me to join the weak, lazy party of us talking about we want all these things in America, not willing to do things at the highest level to make it happen. And I really believe reparations can happen and it could have happened 20, 30 years ago. But it's like, we have to be willing to do the things that some of us are not willing to do to make it happen. It's like, we can build enterprises and drive out the wicked, evil Asians that are looking to take over our continent and build something dynamically great and things like that. Example, we go to countries like Ghana, we don't support their business. We don't encourage anything from them. We do a bunch of, we can do a bunch of hardcore stuff. And I haven't been able, been able to get to where all the things that we can unleash as far as, and it's just basically us doing business and doing things with each other. That alone and keeping a strong link with, with, with shake off the weak links and shake off, shake off the people that are in our way to really just make our, our African continent great and be able to defend our interests globally and be able to work with other countries that we have the same interest in. Just like I'm from Jamaica, I love for us to organize Africa strong to where we can connect and do more things in Jamaica and different parts of the Caribbean and so on. But in order for us to do that, we have to det detach some of our love and patriotism to America and say, hey, you know what? Let's make Africa great again. Let me put more into Africa. And when we build our enterprise there in Ghana and other countries, I'm asking my brothers and sisters that's here in America, do what you need to do with the enterprise at the highest level and let's do things together and be able to be a force of this black enterprise around the world. Because I know at least 95% of us will never leave America because of the love for many different things. You know, but we as an African people globally, should be able to do business with each other regardless of our commitment to certain things. So that's what we're pushing on at the high level and things like that. And I'm out there just recruiting black men and women strong, especially in trying to find some, some, some strong black men because unfortunately we're in a situation where we have, you know, we have like an overpopulation of weak spineless men who refuse to be leaders <laughs> and refuse to do what it takes to take care of our family, protect our children and protect our interests as a people and things like that, and I'm not calling out anyone. And you know, as usual, anything we talk about, anyone of, of our folks out there can take it personal, but, but that's the reality of it. There's something in the water, so I tell people don't drink the water and, and things like that. So literally, um, we're just here to be strong uh, because other people are not strong. And, and sometimes we have to be strong for the weakness of some of our people and things like that. And uh, it's, again, not being harsh on any of us, but it's like we should have been able to build what we need to build in Africa a long time ago. Why is it taking so long? And things like that. Uh, so anyway, family, um, I'm done talking. Let me not carry on. And I can answer last few questions, and then I'll just promise I'll close out. But just wanted to share that with everybody, my passion about what we're fighting for and doing.
All right, well, perfect. Let me just turn us back into gallery view. All right, so appreciate all of the, um, the warriors for hanging on the call. Um, the recordings uh, will be available sometime tomorrow. So everyone, appreciate your energy. And uh, anyone want to talk to me or communicate with me to send a message, my goal is to communicate with all of us on an immediate basis um, and absolutely within 24 hours. And things like that, if you just need to get me directly, just call me or send me a message that I just really need to talk with you and I'll be available. Uh, so I'm committed to this and just want to see um, more of us uh, be committed and we're going to get this done. Before we go, can I make the motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? Uh, yes, appreciate you, uh, Sister Kim. Um, um, motion approve, um, everyone else. And the minutes for today will be continued until our next meeting. All right, perfect, family. And um, the private session for members only will be next Sunday at five o'clock and we'll just go for two hours. Have your presentation ready if you are group organizers. And for those who have not introduced themselves, you'll be able to introduce yourself and uh, we'll be able to just continue and take it from there. So if you have questions about anything and you haven't been able to ask it or talk and you just need me to privately, privately talk to you, just reach out to me. I'm, I'm here to answer all concerns. So other than that family, um, and note that Richard and Corbin is also in the group and things like that. So um, you can always just click on the top and uh, you see all of everyone's name. And then also you see all of the posted documentation that we keep in WhatsApp. So family, uh, everyone take care and appreciate your time and uh, we'll keep it strong and uh, see you in the next conference and everyone have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Hey. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night Romani. Good night, family. Good night. Good night. Good night, my brother. Good night, all. Families, keep it strong. Black power, African nation building. Only way to go. Africa for the Africans. Yes, family. The age of our enterprising Black Star Pan African community family. Yes, it is real. Reach out Africa to us, us the and join the power of us. And we will keep it strong. <laughs> strong to last long. Yes, my brother, man. Keep it strong. All right. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, family. Good night, uh, everyone. Good night. Good night, good night. There's a whole bunch of them. Still working it, huh? Yeah, he's still working it.